the fan. Yeah, it was an ugly fourth quarter last night for the Pacers in Madison Square Garden, one that will circle as got away from them. Kevin Bowen, Jake Query. Kevin and Query, welcome in. 7 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. Really looking forward to uh, rookie Dio Adangbo. He's going to be joining us at about 8.30. Jake, I think I've told you this maybe a few weeks pa- a few weeks ago. I don't think I've heard Chris Ballard gush over a draft pick more in his tenure than Dio Dangbo. Yeah, I, listen, he's got size and speed, right? And he fills a need that the Colts, I, I think, it's interesting. If, if he had not been injured, where would he have been picked? You know, did yeah, they, a great debate. Did they jump up a little bit? Um, but we saw immediately him paying off. Uh, you know, I'm curious. I will forever, in my mind, link he and Quiddy Pay together because of the fact that, you know, they, they're coming in. They are the two guys that are thought to be fulfilling a need that the Colts need, and they're coming in at the same time. And I, this is just the weird stuff, Kevin, that, like, my mind goes to. But I think it's very cool. I mean, both of them have one thing in common in the fact that they are – you know, the the legacies of African immigrants, one from Liberia, one from Nigeria. Like, I just think that's cool. I, I don't know why I think it's cool, but I think it's cool. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, it's a, it, and both of them just kind of have the background stories of their family and the perseverance uh, are pretty inspiring stuff. But, yeah, I, I think, again, had he not been coming off the injury, and I think that, that Dio's acceleration coming off of that injury also is a credit to him. Um there were a lot of people that thought he wouldn't play this year and that it would be a, a like a two-year wait to get him. And here he is, right? And he's making plays. Did you watch the Pacers-Knicks game? I did. Um, I would say during the third quarter, I'm a big golf fan, and so during the third quarter, I switch over to the Manning cast to hear Phil, Phil Mickelson um, with Peyton and Eli, and Phil literally, I've never seen a human being take advantage of talking to Peyton Manning and Eli more in my life. I did not see that part of it. I saw Al Michaels. Uh, Phil asked 37 questions in his eight minutes on air. Like, I mean, F- Peyton and Eli couldn't get any word in. Phil's like, you know, okay, all right. Here we go. First and ten, guys. And, you know, San Francisco's done this and the Rams have done that. Peyton, what are your thoughts on this? And that was literally every single play. So it was for, good or bad? Well, I liked it just because it kept kind of Peyton and Eli, like, so into their football minds and, you know, uh, opening up on that and whatnot. But... I also think Phil literally treated it like he was a 10-year-old and he was shadowing somebody for the day and just had like a list of questions that he wanted to I think Al Michaels made an interesting point when Al Michaels said, like in the middle of their conversation, Al Michaels just said, you know, the thing that makes you guys really good is you can talk about this stuff in a language that everyone understands as opposed to getting way too in deep on Yeah, I think that's a great point. I did hear that as well. Yeah, it wasn't too like, welcome to my PhD in football. Or it, it, it isn't that. Which is interesting because when Manning was a player, and kind of understandably so, he would do that from time to time in the scrums to kind of keep everybody at arm's length of like, look, you guys don't really get what's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, well, you know, I mean, they ran a double safety valve, you know, the corner coming over top, and you're like, what? And I think he did that as kind of a way of saying like, look, guys, don't you don't need to try to get into the arena that I'm in, you know? Um I think he understands his audience now. For sure. I have always said Peyton Manning is the most image and brand conscious athlete that I've ever been around. Yeah. And and, and I don't mean that in a bad way, Kevin. I remember, and I might have told this story before, but, and if I did, I apologize. I I can never remember. But um, when Manning was a Colt, and they retired his number at the University of Tennessee. I was working at Channel 6 at the time, and they said, hey, Manning's – and obviously the Colts were on a bye weekend. And they said, hey, the they're retiring Peyton Manning's jersey, so you're going to go down and cover it in Knoxville. So Otis Jones, the photographer, and I went down to Knoxville and covered, you know, the Manning jersey retirement. And so we got down there. I think we left like Saturday morning. It was a night game. Tennessee was playing South Carolina. And – so during the day leading up to the evening, I was interviewing fans at Tennessee. Hey, what is it you like about Peyton Manning just to have for a story I was doing on what Manning means in Tennessee, whatever. So I probably had, Kevin, I don't know, 45 minutes worth of raw tape 
of people talking about Manning, and then, and then of course Otis's video of Manning on the field getting his jersey retired, etc. So a week later, we were in New England, and Vernon Cheek, who worked for the Colts, was a PR guy for the Colts, walks up to me and says, "Hey, um, Peyton had said that you were in Knoxville," and I go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were down. Otis and I were down there, and I think we might have been the only TV station that went." And he said, "Well, he Peyton wanted to know if there's any way he can get a copy of the tapes." of the video that you have of him getting his jersey retired. And I go, yeah, sure. So I just dubbed off the like 45-minute raw tape and gave it to Vernon and said, here, you can give this to Peyton. And like a week later, Manning walks up to me in the locker room and goes, yeah, I, I got to admit, when you were interviewing that lady from Chattanooga and you made a joke about uh, about me you know, being in Chattanooga, it was really funny. And I'm like, this guy sat in his house, who's been on the cover of Sports Illustrated like 50 times and yeah. number one pick in the draft, and he sat, Kevin, and watched every minute of like the videotapes of like what people were saying about him and and him. And I just that always struck me as I'm not going to say odd, but I was like, really? I mean, like you would think that like he'd like, yeah, okay, whatever. You would think that he would have been used to being in that limelight. But and I, I guess I mean this as a credit to him. But it was not unlike, I mean, I, I, I've told people when I worked at Channel 6, the only two people that used to ask me for copies of tapes were parents whose kids were on Friday Night Football and Peyton Manning. <laughs> so true. You know what I mean? I like, mean, he wants to be in full control. Correct. That's exactly right. And playing the game of football, obviously, that position he can be. And that's what I do like about last night is, yes, it is Omaha Productions and all of that, but you know, Eli does put him in a few awkward situations, which is what I enjoy. Now, I did flip back to the Pacers because I'll be honest with you, Jake. I've never been to Madison Square Garden. It's the best. But for a Monday night November NBA game, that place was pretty lively. Like it's the I, best. I thought it was a tremendous atmosphere and I get it. It was an awful, awful finish. 92-84 is not like some back and forth offensive shootout by any means. But that had a feel to me of like, whoa, you know, this is a little playoff type atmosphere, which again, it's not something you typically get on a Monday in November. Madison Square Garden, I'm telling you, like, you could go to, who's the worst, give me the worst, cheesiest, most awful band you can think of, Kevin. Like, if somebody gave you tickets, you'd be like, yeah, I'm good. I, I don't need to go see them. God, that's a great question. Um, mm. There's got to be one that, like, maybe other people like it, or, or, or like, uh, okay, Creed, remember when Creed for had like a two week window where they were yeah. cool and they were performing. I, at the, I, I was gonna go with Nickelback. Okay, but Nickelback, I, that's yeah, fine. Okay, so like you could be going to a Nickelback concert at one o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon in the middle of July, where there's a million things going on and it's beautiful outside. And if you pull up in the subway at the Madison Square Garden stop. And you get out, like, just the, the buzz and the ambient noise and whatever else, you feel like you are going to the biggest event in the world because it's Madison Square Garden and there's just this hub and this electricity around it that is impossible to quantify. But if you could put it in a jar and sell it, you could literally make a county fair in Nebraska seem exciting. Like, there's just an ambiance about it. And and I, we were talking about Madison Square Garden on this show like two weeks ago and somebody sent me a tweet and they're like, Madison Square Garden is a dump. And I'm like, that's the point. Yes, it's a dump. But like you can still kind of like feel like the the Barnum and Bailey Circus being there in 1948. And, and I realize it's been redone like seven times and it's not the same place where Joe Lewis fought, but there's just a magic about it. There's something about, and there's a reason why Reggie Miller and Michael Jordan, and there's a reason why they all say like, that's the place you want to play. I'm kind of surprised, Kevin. Well, I'm not because James Dolan is an idiot. But like, I'm kind of surprised that the Knicks have not always been the destination location for free agents. Because who wouldn't want to play in the Garden? Except for that, you're paying like 12 percent state tax. You're living probably in a brownstone or an apartment unless you want to drive in with a driver an hour and a half through the zane of New York City traffic. There's a lot that goes into it. But I'm telling you, the Garden, like watching a Pacer game in the Garden is just like that organ. How, how great is that guy's job? You got two notes. Dun, dun, <laughs> dun, dun. You just sit there, two, two I, keys. Last night it seemed like he had a little variety going there. I, I don't know if he's opened up his playbook a little bit there. but <laughs> Do you think they said, 
hey, wait a minute. Um, yeah, well, you know we got fans coming back in the building this year. We got to kind of open up the old the old Oregon playbook That's a little right. bit there. But yeah, it was an ugly fourth quarter. The Pacers literally did not make a shot in the final seven minutes of the game. They scored ten points in the entire fourth quarter, which. Oh boy, that's really, really hard to do. And it's not even like they were getting to the foul line late. Um, they only had four free throws in the final seven minutes of that game as well. And it wasn't as much of an issue for me, Jake, or I guess maybe it hasn't been, but I think last night we saw a little bit of it of like, who is that go-to bucket guy for you yeah. when things stall out? I thought Karis LeVert tried to play hero ball. I would totally agree with that. Yeah, which again, you kind of want him to like, Try and be the guy that gets you a bucket, but last night, I don't know. I mean, I, I do think it's something to be effective if some guys get caught up in the Madison Square ambiance and, and they want to do it on that stage and all of that. Uh, but last night, just a terrible finish. And that that's one where you feel like Pistons, Hornets, Pelicans the rest of the week, that's a pretty easy three-game stretch. If you could have got last night, boom, all of a sudden, we could be talking about the Pacers over five hundred by the end of the week. Yeah, I, Levert, to me... And I haven't seen, admittedly, a lot of Karis LeVert, right? I mean, we're still kind of getting to know Karis LeVert. I thought he played 10% faster faster than he needed to. Does that make sense? Like, uh, And, and I, I realize maybe that's his style of play, Kevin, but like in watching him, I was thinking to myself, like, dude, just calm down. Like, there are times to shake and bake. Yeah. And there are times to go behind the back and in, in between the legs. But when the defender's six feet off of you, you're like, yeah, man, you're expending wasted energy here. Like, just calm down. It was kind of like watching Lance Stevenson, who, by the way, is in the G League. Did you know that? I saw that. Grand Rapids, maybe? I looked the other day at G... I went on the GLeague.com or whatever. Jeez. And boy. looked at their list of players to see. That could be a while. dangerous website if you, Here's if you, a good, if okay. you get a few, a few letters wrong. Well, do you remember the... the Indiana Fever, when they f- first came into the league, fever.com was a that was oh. a site that was not. Oh, gosh. Okay. It was, yeah. a, it was a site of women, but not women's basketball. Got but, it. Got it. So, what? okay, I'm going to give you a trivia question. When I went to the G League roster of, of players and was just scrolling through, like, yeah, hey, I wonder how many guys I've heard of. Like, Vincent Edwards from Purdue is in the G League. Lance Stevenson's in the G League. There was one university more than any other. Now, I'm not saying that this was actually statistically, numerically, factually the case. But there was one university more than any other that when I was scrolling through, I'm like, man, like that guy's name sounds familiar. And then I pulled it up. I'm like, oh, yeah, former five-star all-world recruit, spent one year at this school and is now in the G League. And there were like seven different dudes that fell into that category, like, you know, six eight wing from Texas that was a five star recruit and did the hat dance and it was a big deal and now they're in the G League. What school? A top five program. Kentucky. Very close. That's Kentucky. Yes, except for that Kentucky's players like that are all like in Sacramento and yeah, they're like the ninth man. Correct. Yeah. You know, yeah. some guy that you're like, well, I've heard of this guy, and then you're like, oh yeah, he went to Kentucky for a year. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, North Carolina? Kansas. Same gotcha. difference, though. Yeah. Right? North Carolina would be another one in that category for right. sure. But, how? But, but you know... Well, a Kentucky kid killed the Pacers last night. That Emmanuel quickly was incredible. Correct, and he's another one that you're like, he was a one... I mean, is he maybe a one and done, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And that, you know, him and Derrick Rose, and I know Rose is turning back the clock a little bit, but I think that's always been a concern, Jake, with this Pacers team is like those little guards, you know, kind of keeping them out of the paint, things like that. Uh, no Chris Duarte last night. We should mention that. He had right shoulder soreness. I do. I know, like, we aren't supposed to like the Knicks because they're the Knicks, but I do think they have some pacer qualities in terms of how hard they play. Yeah. Um, Tom Thibodeau, I think, gets them to buy into a Monday night NBA game more than, you know, most teams would. And I, frankly, I just thought watching that game last night, it was eerily reminiscent to me. Obviously, totally different stages, but it reminded me of what Baylor did to Gonzaga on a Monday night and, back here in April of just like the Pacers had zero answer for the Knicks defense, ball pressure, whatever you want to call it. Very similar to Gonzaga and that national title game. And Julius Randle's a really good player. I, I mean, it goes without like he just 
he, he is deceptively quick for the size that he has, and he gets into the lane. I mean, he was kind of a handful for them, too. By the way, I have a question for you. So I'm the new guy here, as you know, right? Yes. Uh, is this a printer question? How, how long does the new guy status last for me? Because I'm feeling a little bit self-conscious here of not getting everything. Yesterday, Todd Meyer, who's the executive producer here, said to me, you know, I cleaned that entire cubicle area for you, and you haven't put up any pictures or bobbleheads yet. I think Todd's pretty self self protective of that. And, and I'm like, well, I, I I try to keep a very non nothing in here area because I've been fired so many places. It's much easier to clean out. Yeah, right. Uh, doing like, the walk of shame to the parking lot is, is is awkward when you've got about four or five boxes. Correct. So yeah. you want to limit that, right? right. Like, I, I mean, I've been. Hell, I've done it out of this building before. Well, where I'm like, yeah. When I got fired up at West 56th Street, I was carrying you know multiple boxes out to my car, and Chris Hagen's doing a stand up out there, and he goes, "Wow, you look like you just got fired." I'm like, well, <laughs> well, Hagen, you know, funny you mention that. Yeah, any openings at Fox 59? Wow, really? That's yeah. how it went down. Oh yeah, him and uh, him and Brett uh, Brett Bensley, two, how two, long? two great individuals. But Hagen and I still laugh about that. How, how long after you were? given your walking papers and cleaning out your office did you first off did you have to go back to clean out your office like you know how you say like listen i'll come back later when no one's here oh no i i did it all in one i mean i didn't have a ton in there at the time i wasn't married or had children did you have before that day did you have any inkling or indication that that was coming no so it was probably i think about two uh maybe Maybe just one trip, maybe two trips. I think someone helped me out to my car, which is a very ni- n- nice thing to do. So, and were you married at the time? No, dating my wife, but no. And she's st- she still married you, even though you were shockingly, yeah. Well, oh, I mean, okay. do you think she married me for money, Jake? I mean, you know full well how much <laughs> we make in this business. Fair enough. So here's my question, though. So I, I log on to the the system here, right? So I, I use my login and my password and whatever else. And I get onto the the internet, the World Wide Web, as we call it, and and then <laughs> breaking news. Here. Yeah. So this is a sports show, right? So I, I go onto one of the sports sites of one of the teams locally, and and oh, I'd like to read the bio on this player, and then I click on that, and it says log in again. Now I've already done this. Yeah, How it many, is. You well, know, it's a very secure login system here at the World. I mean, Wide I'm not I'm not logging into AshleyMadison.com here. I mean, what what is <laughs> Fever.com? Yeah, are, yeah, I'm not going are, to the original <laughs> Fever.com. That is you correct. Are logging on, but we will have Dio Dengbo in an hour. I assume that was the bio well, that you were looking for. Yeah, I'd like to find his bio if I could. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. <laughs> I just get very confused by it. Fair. Uh, I also get confused by this because I can never remember. So, Mark Dyke, then I'm going to ask you because I mean, after all, it's early and I'm still waking up. Uh, we do the Big O Tires now, or we come Next. back and do that? We go to break, and then we come back with it. See, Kevin, eventually I'm going to get this straight. What, do, what are. are we? What's the over-under? February before I can figure this stuff out? Well, I don't think you lose new guy status until you get the get the schedule right. It, it is confusing. The first hour is different than the next two hours. Yeah, why is that? Who laid that out? Boy, I think it was the people that sat in our chairs before us. It's out of our pay grade, I think. Yeah, way, yeah. You want to talk about pay grade? Yeah. Call up Jeff Ricker, W-E-I. <laughs> Yes, I, I know Rick. You know, actually, Jeff Rickard, when I had my heart attack, Jeff Rickard was the first person to come visit me in the hospital. Uh, that's, he, I remember him telling me that. Which yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, Big O Tire Sports Center update is next. As Kevin had mentioned, we're going to have uh, a Colt player on. We're going to do it in just over an hour from now, as a matter of fact. And the fact of uh, Dio Adangbo will be joining us at 8.30. 8.45, Nate Atkins, Indianapolis Star. Jeremiah Johnson talking Pacers at 9 o'clock. And a soccer announcement at 9.45. Full show, locked and loaded. Sun rising in Indy. It is Kevin and Query here, 93.5, 107.5, The Fan. Touchdown, Jonathan Taylor. This week, the Colts head east to Buffalo. Now let's see Jacksonville beat the Bills. We beat Jacksonville. 23-17 to 17 is our final score. So we like our chances. The Colts look to avenge last year's playoff loss to Buffalo on Sunday. Our coverage starts at 10 a.m. It's a block punt picked up by the Colts. Matt Taylor with a kickoff at 1 o'clock. It's a touchdown for the Colts! Your home for Colts football is 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Presented for the people by Caesars Sportsbook. The goblet has dropped. Download it. Must be 21 and up. Crew Car Wash Wash Books make the perfect gift for anyone on your list. The Ultimate Book is on sale now for buy four washes, get two free. Purchase at any Crew Car Wash location today. 
This holiday at Metro by T-Mobile, the big 5G upgrade just got better because now Metro has the largest selection of free 5G phones and prepaid, like the Samsung Galaxy 5G. And Metro gives you one line of unlimited 5G data for just 25 bucks a month with 5G included at no extra cost. So you'll be able to stream, snap, upload, and share the holiday cheer all season. Ring in the holidays with the big 5G upgrade from Metro. Get unlimited 5G and a brand new 5G phone when you switch and trade in. More choices on free 5G phones, more savings, and more 5G coverage at no extra cost. All with the power of the T-Mobile 5G network. That's how you get more for the holidays. Only at Metro. After 24 months, $25 price may increase. Limited time in store only. No tethering. Unlimited on network only. Required port from eligible carrier. If congested, data users greater than 35 gigabytes per month. Notice lower speeds and Metro customers notice lower speeds versus T-Mobile due to deprioritization. Video at 480p. See store for details. Hey, guys, no pressure here, but if you really want to make this the best holiday ever, ask her already. What's more romantic than a holiday proposal? Come to Shane Company to see our amazing selection of unique engagement rings, crafted to last forever. Our warranty is free for a lifetime, and it even covers the center stone. No matter your budget, we'll help you create the perfect ring. We also have rings already set with a center stone, ready to go. And let's talk about center stones. All of our diamonds are conflict-free and natural, handpicked for their beauty. And Tom Shane personally selects our rubies and sapphires in Bangkok. We have so many center stones to choose from. Plus, we're a direct importer, which means we pass the savings on to you. All right, guys, make it happen. Book a virtual or an in-store appointment with a non-commissioned jewelry consultant or just drop by the store. Check our website for hours. Now you have a friend in the jewelry business. Shane Company and Shaneco.com. The nonstop action of tennis takes center court at Bet River Sportsbook. Bet River serves up an exciting tennis betting experience like no other with a massive number of live in game betting options, including point by point betting. But don't just bet on the game live, watch it live. Bet River Sportsbook live streams a huge number of tour events from around the world throughout the tennis season. Try it today, and Bet Rivers will match your first deposit up to $250. It's a winner. Bet on tennis at Bet River Sportsbook. Go now to betrivers.com. Must be 21 over to play. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 9 with it. 1 800 994 We've done it again. Golden Oak Lending has dropped rates even lower. I'm James Hawkins, president of Golden Oak. With a 1.875% rate and home values up, you can get more cash out now. Call 317-706-GOLD today and make no mortgage payments until next year. Golden Oak Lending cured my blues. NMLS 114937, 1.875% fixed, 2.952% APR, FHA 15-year mortgage with 20% equity and approved credit. When it comes to working at GEICO, our best advocates are our employees, like Maxine. But since she's so focused on growing her career, we hired an actor to read her story. At GEICO, I love mentoring the new associates to help them make this a career and not just a job. And with new opportunities and job stability, GEICO has been helping people grow their careers for over 75 years. The only downside? She still hasn't met the gecko. Where are you, fella? Ready to start your career indie? We're hiring claim sales and service agents. Apply online today at geico.job slash indie. Joint pain relief doesn't have to mean drugs and surgery. Now there's a better alternative that patients are raving about. Hey, it's Kevin Bowen for my friends at QC Kinetics. Local medical professionals using natural biological treatments, highly concentrated in healing properties from your own body, put directly into that affected joint. We're talking restoring and repairing damaged tissue the way your body was designed to heal. If you're tired of the Band-Aid solutions like drugs and steroids and you really want to avoid surgery, then you need to check out QC Kinetics, regenerative natural treatments for knee pain, back pain, shoulder pain, pain in your hips. Don't continue to suffer and don't go in for surgery until you check this out. See if you're a candidate at QC Kinetics. Call 463-235-7160. That's 463-235-7160. No surgical pain relief with lasting results. 463-235-7160. Hun, have you seen this internet bill? Why'd the price go up? I don't know. Did you change anything? No. Did you? You switched us to those fancy coffee beans. Maybe you're on a roll, making everything more expensive. Did you suddenly inherit money you didn't tell me about? 
Whoa. If your internet bill is giving you trust issues, you're not a bad partner. You just need a straightforward price. Maybe we switch to decaf. Get AT&T Fiber. Equipment fees are included, and with no price increase at 12 months, there are no surprises. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash faster. The Sports Center update on 93.5 and 107.5. The fan is presented by Big O Tires, the team you trust. It is Big O Tires update time here on Kevin and Query. Let's begin with the Colts from yesterday. Um, again, we're going to have Dio Dengbo on around 8.30. It is at Buffalo and home to Tampa Bay to close out the month of November. Frank Reich on the magnitude of these two games. Right now, what our mindset is, is this next week, every week is a great measuring stick. And obviously going to Buffalo against a, a very good team, very well coached team, be a great measuring stick to see where we're at at this point in the season. From an injury update, Jake, we saw Quentin Nelson go down in that game. He returned. Uh, Frank thinks he's okay, but they're going to monitor that as the week moves along. Uh, Darius Leonard, no update yet. Both of those guys went down and looked like potentially re-aggravated other injuries. I know we talked a little bit about this yesterday. The more I hear Frank Reich talk about this kicking situation, the more I think it's going to be Michael Badgley moving forward. Kevin, I think you were with me on this, right? Yeah. Have we not said? Here's the thing. Rodrigo Blankenship, if you were to make a list of things about him that separate him as a as a as an NFL player at his position, but you have to remove anything that, that has nothing to do with actual football, what would the attributes be? He's a consistent kicker from 45 yards in. The things about him that, that people like, which I understand, he's a very likable guy. Yeah, he can hang out with my nephew and do Legos Correct. all day long. Yeah. But that doesn't help you hit field goals. He has, you know, he's a fun personality. He's got cool glasses. He's got a t-shirt. Okay, that's all great. Does that help you when the game's on the line and you got to hit from 51 yards out? Yeah, I'm not going to act like I am an expert in anything, let alone NFL kicking, but it just seems like the ball kind of pops off Badgley's leg a little bit more than Hot Rod. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, again, I, I think if you had, if there were no limits on roster spots and or salary and you had unlimited funds, it'd be perfect if Blankenship is your extra point kicker from here till the end of time. <laughs> But, unfortunately, kicking be- goes beyond, more often than not, 30 to 40 yards. And when it comes down to it, where a kicker earns their money is when you got a 56-yarder at the end of a half or the end of a game, and Badgley gives you a better opportunity in those situations. Seven games to go for the Colts based off kind of scheduling Can metrics. I prop my feet up here? Does that bother you? It's, We've got a, a seat between the two of us. And I'm, yeah, I feel like that chair needs to go anyways. Okay, so, so this is know, an okay w- footstool? One step closer to the dumpster is fine by me. <laughs> okay. uh, the hardest remaining schedule in the AFC belongs to the Colts, and the test will begin again this Sunday as they go back on the road to face Buffalo. All right, last night at Madison Square Garden, a fourth quarter to forget for the Indiana Pacers. They score 10 points in the entire fourth quarter. They do not hit a shot from the field for seven minutes. 13 straight misses to end the game. They lose again, 92-84. After the game, Rick Carlisle talked about the difference down the stretch. Uh, physical play, um, you know, I thought you know their their aggression made it, made it tough on us. We had some good looks that didn't go down, and you know, we had others that were not good, and we were up against the shot clock a couple times. And, you know, this place can turn into a frenzy place. So, you know, we just uh, we got to do a better job executing, and it always helps to get stops. And in the fourth quarter, you know, getting outscored 23-10, to 10, uh, we, weren't, we were getting stops, but we weren't getting enough. Listen, T.J. McConnell, Miles Turner, and Keelan Martin, who has been kind of a rising player for the Pacers, between those three players, 11 total points. Not going to win a lot of games in that situation. Miles Turner, and I know that like bagging on Miles Turner is kind of a trendy thing to do. I happen to be a fan of what Miles Turner brings to the game. But three points and only four field goal attempts in over 30 minutes, you need more than that. Yeah, a little hero ball from Karis LeVert, 5 of 14. Sabonis at 21 and 15. Brogdon, 22. Uh, T.J. McConnell, again, like you said, not off the bench, what he has been giving you. Pacers will stay on the road for two more at the Pistons, the worst offensive team in the NBA tomorrow night. 
against the Hornets on Friday, home to the Pelicans. That's the 2 and 13 Pelicans at Gamebridge Fieldhouse on Saturday. Ironically enough, the uh, Pistons, who they'll see tomorrow night, a couple of, I think, just Big Ten Indiana ties. You got Trey Lyles, Luca Garza, and Corey Joseph, former Pacer as well. Cade Cunningham, number one overall pick at 25. Good player. Last night for the Pistons. Corey Joseph, I didn't realize, to be honest with you, that he was still in the league, but I, I liked Corey Joseph when he was a Pacer. I just thought a nice, stable player. Stable yeah. in himself, good, solid player. Yeah, solid. Good I think citizen. a nice little second unit piece there. All right, college basketball tonight. Purdue's got Wright State at 7 o'clock. That's before their big weekend with North Carolina. And then uh, the winner loser of Villanova, Tennessee, in that four team. I believe it's a Hall of Fame classic for Purdue. IU's got St. John's tomorrow night. That's 9 o'clock um, on FS1. The 7 o'clock game on FS1 tomorrow night is Butler hosting Michigan State. It's part of those Gavit games. You saw a couple games last night. Big East, Big Ten. I believe Illinois lost to Marquette. I think the Providence beat Wisconsin. They were up on them early. I'm not sure if they... You know, I would check, except for that I'm not logged back into this site here. You're already off? To show... <laughs> Maybe you are looking up Ashley Madison or something else. <laughs> you, 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 uh, you logged me in, and then it realized that I was scamming. And uh, let's see here. I'll look. You wanted to know what game again? Oh, uh, well, Providence against Wisconsin. Not earth-shattering, but, you know, if you can this find was it. On, this was on what day, allegedly? <laughs> yeah, last night. I'm having to go back here and, and check everything. <laughs> a- as you were, Kevin, I'll let you know here in a second. We mentioned it briefly uh, yesterday. We'll bring it up again. We are down to 24 teams in the IHSA State Football Finals. Announced yesterday, it'll be the odd games next Friday at Lucas Oil Stadium. I should say the odd classes. So I think 1A, 3A, 5A uh, down there at Lucas Oil. And then the even classes on Saturday. 2A, 4A, and 6A. The local teams running it down in 6A. You've got Center Grove against Ben Davis. Westfield will have Merrillville. 5A, the local teams. Cathedral and Zionsville still left. Opposite sides of the bracket. 4A, you've got Mount Vernon after their big upset of number one, Ron Colley. 3A, Burbuff and Tri-West. I believe those are opposite sides of the bracket as well. 2A, Cecina. And Class 1A, you've got Lutheran and Tri. Uh, Nate Watson with 24 overcoming a 25 point effort from Brad Davison. Do you know which I can't team that dude is still there? Do you know which team either of those two plays? Well, I Brad Davison has been at Wisconsin since I think I was at IU. Brad Davison indeed at Wisconsin as the Friars get a 63-58 win over the Badgers. At the Cole Center. Was it at the Cole Center? I believe so. Okay. Wow. Do you ever go to Coles? No, you know, but uh well back in the day with my mom, big big Coles fan. You know, I have been to the Cole Center. You talk about a great atmosphere. Have, you have been there? Yes. Um, Indiana lost. It was actually a decently close game. When you say Indiana lost at the Cole Center, that's not shocking news by any means. But uh, you remember Jordan Taylor, point guard? Yeah. For uh, for the Badgers? Yeah, he was terrific in that Okay, game. so did you go, like you just were with a buddy and you're like, let's just road trip up there? Or what no, was the- no, I covered the, uh, covered the team for the Indiana Daily Student my senior year. Oh, really? Yeah. So that was the uh, watch shot which, year. Which... You know, they should talk about that more. Uh, which <laughs> which arena on the road in the Big Ten? You know, Ten we're coming up on the, the anniversary coolest? of the watch shot, by the way. I mean, listen, I grew up a rabid Indiana fan. Huge, right? As big as it gets. You ever heard Don Fisher's call the watch shot? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a few times. Indiana, and I grew up, like I said, as big an Indiana fan as you can find. If Indiana fans want to push their chest out that it is still in the category of Kentucky, Kansas, UCLA, Louisville, whatever, then they need to back off a little bit the celebrations of a December win against the team that went on to win the national championship. Right? Like, it was a December win. It was a great shot. It was a great moment. Cool. You got to stay there. Right? Yeah, probably time to move on. Decade ago, I believe, coming up. Uh, Maybe not this year, but next year. No, it is this year, right? 2011? Yeah. 2011-2012 2011-2012 season. It'll be 10 years next month. I mean, it was shot. cool. Don't get me wrong. It was cool. But the reason why it was so symbolic to Indiana fans is because it was like, we are back. We, we beat Kentucky. We're back in the upper echelon. And they couldn't sustain it. They actually I mean, lost to Kentucky in the Sweet 16 that year. Yeah, that's what I mean. So you couldn't sustain it, right? I mean, so you... you that, that group, that team, Sweet 16 was as good as it got. That was the ceiling. 
if that had catapulted Indiana into the stratosphere where they were then competing for national championships on a regular basis instead of hoping to burst the bubble and get into the tournament. You know what I mean? I would say coolest Big Ten venue was probably the Kohl Center. But that was a 9 o'clock game, so that, I think, helped that environment, certainly. And they a lot of spotted cow going around. down before that? A lot of spotted cow, it yeah. seemed like, in fair the student enough. section. All right, fair enough. I've always thought... Um, you know, some some venues in the Big Ten, Mackey Arena is fantastic. Oh, yeah. I mean, know? I would say non-Mackey division, honestly. I, Chrysler Arena is one of them. That, like, the Big House, for example, if you've ever been to the Big House, you're just kind of like, really? There's 105,000 people in here? Like, it, it literally, it's a it's the state of Michigan entire ARP membership that's, like, in the lower 10 rows, and it's the quietest 105,000 people, 110,000 people anywhere. See, the only game I've been to the big house was Notre Dame, Michigan at night, and that was that was rocking. No, that'd be cool. Now, granted, if I went to like Rutgers at Michigan, it'd probably be a little bit different. Well, you know, Rutgers in Indiana, now that's electric, Kevin. <laughs> you got guys with shirts off. 38-3, right? right? I mean, let's talk more about that, shall we? Um, a- anyway, so I, listen, we didn't get into a lot like the Indiana football situation, probably by design yesterday, right? I would say that was accurate. Yeah, maybe a little bucket week. Uh, we can hit back on that. But, yeah, I would say that was by design yesterday. All right, mm, fair enough. Not getting into that. Uh, 735, you're listening to Kevin and Query. Soccer Saturday featuring Indy 11. If this is your football, this is your show. Saturday at 9 on The Fan. Golf Performance Academy at Golf Club of Indiana's 6,000 square foot indoor outdoor golf facility is geared toward lessons, club fitting, practice of the full swing, and putting. Each hitting bay offers flight scope technology to track each shot and provide feedback. With eight large screen TVs, full beverage service, free Wi Fi, and a conference room, they can provide opportunities for social and corporate functions. The Golf Performance Academy, the only facility of its kind in the state, even in the country. Call 769-3482 for more. Fall in Indy, and for 20 years, Rhino Shield's been covering Indiana homes like your neighbor Edwina. Over the years, I had to touch up the house. I just got to the point where I couldn't spend any more money on the outside of the house. And when I saw Rhino Shield, I thought that was the answer to my problem. And Rhino Shield's not paint. It's better. I've had painters here before, and it was usually quite a disaster with them leaving their equipment here and, and picking up things in the yard. But Rhino Shield was right on it. You too can help Rhino Shield celebrate 20 years of covering Indiana homes for 20% off the regular price. The gentleman said, if if you're interested, give me a call. And I said, honestly, can you come tomorrow? <laughs> Here's owner Shane Smith. This offer is limited, so call me at 888-RHINO-41. That's 888-RHINO-41. Don't paint. Don't vinyl. Go, go Rhino. Rhino. Don't paint. Don't vinyl. Go Rhino Shield. Never paint your house again. Rhino Shield. This ad for Hellsberg Diamonds has been specifically written for those who'd rather think about hockey than engagement rings. You're at a game and your team scores the winning goal just as time runs out. Now, if that game is your proposal and you're running out of time to find the perfect engagement ring, Hellsberg Diamonds is your winning shot. Our combination of quality diamonds, wide selection, and a price match guarantee means you can be confident in your Hellsberg Diamonds engagement ring buzzer beater. Visit your local Hellsberg store and ask about our amazing financing options or check us out at hellsberg.com. Hey, it's JMV at Race Trash Service. They're all about protecting the environment while bringing cost savings to you. Natural resources are going up in price, and landfill space is disappearing. So Ray's is committed to preserving the Hoosier environment and serving Central Indiana with efficient, cost-effective, and responsible waste removal and recycling solutions. They're one of the largest recyclers in the state of Indiana with customer rebates on paper, cardboard, and so much more. Visit Raystrash.com to see how they can bring recycling solutions to your organization. When we at AmericanEagle.com were asked by our client, Repair Clinic, to, well, repair their website, our digital marketing experts, like Tim, rolled up their sleeves and got to work. If you know Tim, you know that he loves a good challenge, which meant that this project was pretty much the highlight of Tim's year. From improving slow-loading performance that plagued our client's site to slashing duplicate pages and building an optimized sitemap, Tim was like a real-life action hero of website optimization and our client reaped the benefits with major strides in their seo like more traffic impressions and revenue tim and the team even helped them create search and email marketing campaigns and better ongoing analytics tracking however complex your digital challenges from digital marketing and strategy 
to web development, UX, and more, talk to the experts at AmericanEagle.com. Don't just grow. Soar. MGM, the king of sportsbooks, welcomes you with a special offer on the NBA. Simply place a $10 Moneyline wager on any game, and if either team hits a three-pointer, you'll win $200 in free bets regardless of your bet's outcome. Just use the bonus code. It's the FAN200. That's all one word, capital T, capital F, when you make your first bet. Enjoy NBA action like never before with BetMGM's live betting options, boosted odds specials, and daily promotions all season long. Download the app or go to BetMGM.com and use that bonus code, the FAN200. Again, that's all one word to win $200 in free bets if a three pointer is made in the game you wager on. Nothing beats a win at BetMGM. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. 21 years of age or older to wager. Indiana only. New customer offer. All promotions are subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued as is non-withdrawable free bets or site credit. Free bets expire seven days from issuance. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. For the first time in the history of Hard Knocks, HBO and NFL Films are teaming up for an in-season edition of the Emmy-winning sports reality franchise. Hard Knocks in season, the Indianapolis Colts, follows the Colts as they navigate the challenges of an NFL season and battle for a spot in the playoffs. This is going to be behind-the-scenes footage of your favorite team like you've never seen before. The weekly docuseries premieres Wednesday at 10 p.m. on HBO Max. At Kroger, we know the holiday season is going to be special for everyone. So use the Kroger app to get personalized coupons, weekly deals, and rewards like fuel points. That way you'll get all the fresh holiday specialties you love at prices that are lower than low. Kroger, fresh for everyone. We're hiring for immediate openings with next day pay, benefits, and great perks. Apply today at jobs.kroger.com. Right now at Wendy's, see why everyone is raving about their brand new fries. Natural cut skin on with a hint of sea salt and guaranteed to be hot and crispy or they'll replace them. You know, the way fries should be. Try Wendy's guaranteed hot and crispy fries today A participating Wendy's. Listening to Kevin Inquiry on 93.5 and 107.5, The Fan. We have Dio Dangbo join us here in less than an hour. We're also going to talk a little bit of Hard Knocks. They were in studio uh, yesterday, and just kind of curious Jake's thoughts on that because we haven't hit on it too, too much. The debut episode tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Yeah, Jake, I've, I think I've made it pretty clear my thoughts on. Like Matt Eberflus in this Colts defense, I think he should be commended for the play that really sealed the game on Sunday. Uh, Adengbo had the strip sack. What I loved about that play in particular, and honestly, you could say this for the whole game on Sunday. We talked about it during Friday's show. You, the only way, in my opinion, Jacksonville was going to be able to kind of go blow for blow with you is if Trevor Lawrence felt comfortable. I never felt like Lawrence was comfortable in that pocket. And on the game-winning play, Kenny Moore blitzes. You bring more than you know they can block, and it was the more pressure, along with Quiddy Pay on the other edge, that forced Lawrence to step up in the pocket. Boom! There's DeForest Buckner and Dio Dengbo waiting for him. And I thought when you brought pressure, which they did a lot of on Sunday, that was the difference in the game. I think that's true of virtually any quarterback, right? I mean, obviously, when you have a young quarterback that is trying to probably head on a swivel in the league it is easier to get that disruption in terms of their mental focus. Um, you know, in Lawrence's case also, you combine that with the fact that he had no receivers getting separation. No. And I don't know if that's an indictment on the receivers or a credit to the Colts' defense, maybe a combination of both. But Lawrence just couldn't get anything going. I, You know, that that offense for Jacksonville, can you imagine being like a Jaguar season ticket holder? I mean, it is as anemic nope. as it gets, right? Nope. Hope you enjoy the pool. Yeah. And uh, Is Urban Meyer going to be there in a year? I would say no, and I, th- I thought Urban would would work out. I look like an absolute idiot with that with that statement. I, based on what? Based on what? In, in terms of you thinking it was going to work out? I just thought his college pedigree was incredible, and I get that it's different. But I thought his will to get it done 
would win out in the end. And I know at times that Will is psychotic and well, what's interesting damning to, me, to Kevin, his health, but still. What's interesting to me about Urban Meyer, you know, a, 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 a play-by-play viewer of Ohio State football, I am not. But I see him a fair amount, obviously, you know, being in the big, you know, you just, you can't avoid Ohio State football. Urban Meyer, during the course of his coaching tenure at Florida and then Ohio State, and I'm talking about on field between the lines, his teams were so sharp. But if you, if you really look, go back and look at it, the latter part of his tenure at Ohio State started to get pretty sloppy. And all of a sudden, like the things where Ohio State was laser sharp focused discipline, and and Ohio State Notre Dame is a similar situation. Brian Kelly, if you look at Notre Dame games, Kevin, I think you'd agree with this. One of the things that Notre Dame does as well as anybody in college football is just stays on task and then waits for their opponent late third, early fourth to start making mistakes and having mental errors. And Notre Dame does not. Yeah, it's the old Bob Knight quote: "The winner goes the." person that commits the fewest mistakes or something like that right well, I yeah, mean, yeah. I, yeah. and that's and notre dame does a really good job of that that's what ohio state did forever towards the end of the urban meyer ohio state era it felt like they all of a sudden that just got away from them and they started making you know sloppy plays penalties whatever and you're like what is going on and then ryan day takes over and and you know you've seen what's happened so i had this vision that when urban meyer went to jacksonville that the jaguars would be similar in terms of just really disciplined, but I kept going back to the way it ended with Ohio State, and it seems like that lack of discipline is also within Jacksonville. And then the whole thing of I'm I'm sorry, but the whole thing with London and and or excuse me, not London, but which game? Where was it? Was here? Was it not? Where he he didn't go back to Jacksonville? Yeah, Thursday night game in Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Okay. Yeah, I, could have been London. London. He maybe could have got away. That's with right. London was the next week. Yeah, but, I don't but know like, about Ohio State's alumni base in London. But but how do you away. not go back with your team? It just seems like he's already lost that that locker room. You know, it's funny that you bring up the whole Ohio State, the Notre Dame comparison there, Jake. I think a compliment, ironically, for this Colts team. Is and it kind of hinted at this yesterday. Like the Colts' bad games are not all caps lock, bad, horrific, ugly. Like Sunday, we would consider that an ugly game. It was ugly because all they did was punt, not because they turned it over four right, times, right. not because they had 15 penalties, not because they got a blocked punt. And like, I don't know how much of a compliment that is, but I think it's better than the alternative because the Colts are usually really good on special teams. And they were on Sunday. They typically force teams to be one-dimensional offensively. They stop the run more often than not. And this season, they have not turned the ball over really at all. Those but, qualities, it's something. And it's a reason why they are 5-5 five and five right now. Yes, they're going to have to beat better teams, better quarterbacks. We know that. But I do think this gets back to our old uh, like higher floor debate the Colts ugly has kept them away from losing that game that is just a disastrous loss that, you know, more times than not can end your season. But here's a question, okay? I'm going to give you the game. You tell me whether or not you think the Colts' loss was self-inflicted versus just beaten by a team that was better that day. Seattle. No, Seattle's better. Rams. I would say the Rams are yeah, Rams Rams are better. I know it was a close game, but yeah. Titans. You could say some self inflicted. You had the three turnovers in that game and you're your I think plus three in turnover margin. Okay. Next one's pretty obvious here. Ravens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean that Definitely. was Yeah. That that speaks for itself. Um and Titans again. Second Titans go round, you could say was self inflicted because you get out to the big lead, and then how, how do you let them back in, right? And that was the one kind of turnover filled. You know, you, right. you, you could point to that. I guess what I'm getting at is they typically are not committing these fatal turnovers. Their special teams is not costing them defensively. They're not getting just absolutely shredded in the run and the pass. Again, I, I don't know if that's some ringing endorsement, but it has kept them away from the fatal loss. And as we talk about on the stretch, as much as like 
they need to beat these playoff teams. You still go to Houston well, and, and, and go to Jacksonville, and you can't afford to lose those. But what I'm saying is it's not as though, because nothing would be more frustrating than if you have a team that clearly has the superior roster to other teams and lack of discipline is what is holding them back. I, I think in the Colts' case, it's a little bit of, you know what I mean? Like the games that we just, there are teams out there with better rosters than the Colts. There are teams that the Colts have a better roster. But I don't know that you would say that they are a completely molded and designed team where you say, if they go out and play, like there have been Colts teams here in this city, Kevin, where going out to it, you looked at it and said, they are going to win this game. So long as they take care of themselves, no one's going to beat them. Only self-infliction is going to beat the Colts. That's not the case with this roster. Now, I think probably 70% of the league, you would say, if the Colts go out and play their game, they're going to win. But there are teams out there that, all things given equal, are better than Indianapolis. But the, it, there have been games so far, though, where you look at it and th- you would say, you know what, two games, three games? That's probably on par for any team that there are two or three just off days where you lose a game and you look back and you go, man, that that one really got away. And then there are other, you know, like you said, Seahawks, Rams, you know, legitimate, right? Those are the games where, so when they get into the postseason, then there are still going, somebody asked me yesterday, can the Colts win the Super Bowl? If they get hot, can the Colts win the Super Bowl? Sure. But it's going to rely on getting again, it's going to rely on somebody else probably having a day like the Colts had against, say, the Ravens, where there are some self-inflictions on the other side. I would would argue multiple games it would take that. Yeah, yeah. But, but. What I said was, can the Colts win the Super Bowl if they get hot? Sure. So too can Cleveland, you know, the Chargers, the 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 Ravens, the Steelers. I mean, there are a number of teams that are in that same boat, right? I mean, that the, there have been teams in the past where you looked at it and said, if they don't screw up, this Colts team is going to win this, at least get to the Super Bowl. This is not one of them. Now, what about someone that would say, well, those teams that you just mentioned, Chargers, Browns, whoever, they've beaten legit teams this season. You look at right now, I think it's just the Colts and Texans, the only two teams in the AFC that have yet to beat a team over 500. Yeah. And if you're going to go on a run in the playoffs, then hell, you've got, you're right, right. if you're going to get to the right. playoffs, let alone get on a run, you've you're going to have beat. to do things you haven't done in over a year. Correct. I've always wondered this in this town. If people were asked right now, if, if, if you kick a bottle and a genie pops out, and the genie says, I, I can secure it right now. Colts win the Super Bowl or Pacers win the NBA title? Which one do you pick? Oh, Colts Super Bowl in this town? Think so? Yeah. Have I you seen the attendance attendance over at Gamebridge Fieldhouse? Understood. I think there are people. I think it would probably be 60-40, but I don't think it's as... as I don't think it's... It, it, you know what? In all honesty, Kevin, it's an age question. For people my yeah. age and older, they'd probably say Pacers because we've watched them for so long and they've never won an NBA title. That's That's a good point, yeah. Whereas I have seen the Colts win a Super Bowl in my adulthood, but I've not seen the Pacers. You know, I've seen them get close, but yeah, I'm probably just going off of today's popularity. Yeah, I, I but I I think that there would still be, but that shows the NFL is absolutely the behemoth, right? right? I mean, to be the top of to be the Super Bowl champions in this country from a pop culture standpoint absolutely supersedes being the NBA champions a million times over. Like, the state of Wisconsin is far more known for Aaron Rodgers flirting with Super Bowls than it is Giannis taking the Bucks to the NBA title, to your point and to be fair. But I do think that there are people that would pick the Pacers just because they've never done it. Dio Dangba is going to join us in a little bit over a half hour. Let's get to Jeff. Jeff, I want to talk about the Colts and creating turnovers. Good morning, Jeff. Hey, guys. Uh, real quick query on that last comment. Um, I think the NBA has kind of sailed off in the distance compared to the NFL. So, I, yeah, we're a basketball state, but I still think people favor football, professional football over professional basketball I, There's no anymore. question that the NFL is bigger than the NBA. I mean, that's right. not even that's not even a, an, an issue. I, I just think right. there are some people, because they have seen the Colts win it, that would say, you know what, I'd like to see the Pacers because I've never seen it. Sure. Hey, real quick. So you mentioned they're, they're not – creating turn or they're not making turnovers they're making people one-dimensional uh they're, no, 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 that, they're not they're not turning it over themselves Jeff. Cor- correct yeah that's yeah, fine yeah. man i'm sorry no, yeah. all good. their their offensive lines getting 
probably is playing about as good as it is. I still don't know on a pass rush if they're as great as what everybody thinks they are. They're running the ball. Their defense is solid. Even with the injuries, their defense is solid. They've got good linebacking. Line's pretty decent. The DBs are struggling because you got a lot of people hurt. But overall, talent-wise, and I said this last year, they're as talented as anybody. I mean, Wentz is playing well. So if if they're doing all those things that you guys talked about, and they're four and five or five and five, I don't even know what they are. Um, then you got to look at the coaching staff a little bit and the GM. Did they do anything to get better at the wide receiver? No, they got nobody to throw the ball to. Okay, um, I mean, but no, hold on. Okay, and I and I'm not disagree. I'm playing devil's advocate here to an extent, but. You're, you're commending their roster, saying they're as talented as anybody on one hand, and then saying it's an indictment on the general manager on the other. The general manager is responsible for comment one. You're absolutely right. Um, so let's go to the coaching staff then, okay? Last weekend, they had been throwing the ball deep, and it's been working. Well, I don't care if it's pass interferences, what it is. How many times did they throw the ball deep Sunday? Yeah, that was an issue. I mean, when is, when is he going to learn – I don't care if, if Wentz has got three seconds to throw the ball. Throw it deep and see what happens every once in a while. I mean, you've got to open the field up, and he didn't do that beginning, so they're one in five or whatever. I mean, it late, and they're winning games. I mean, I'm, I'm not a football guy, but I'm not a dummy. I mean, uh, my three-year-old could probably tell you this. Come on, throw the ball deep. Open it up a little bit, make teams play you deep, and maybe more of that 10-yard, 15-yard pass plays start. Um, and then my last comment is, I'll be honest with you, I, I thought about this last night, if you could take 20 teams this year that can win the Super Bowl, there is no front runner in really either league. That yeah, by design, to- right? I mean, the parrot of the right. NFL is by design, yeah. and I thought about it last night, too, as I'm watching. You know, I remember working in St. Louis and San Francisco, that rivalry, and it was the old line was San Francisco saying, you know, same old sorry-ass Rams. Well, that, I mean, then last night I'm watching, I'm like, there you go, right? But the Rams, Kevin, looked like a team at the beginning of the year. You're like, here you go. I mean, this is the best team in the league, right? And they're just stockpiling talent. Then they hit a rut. Everybody hits a rut, right? The parity of the NFL across the board was by design, and you see right now. And that's why it's the 800-pound gorilla, because people love it because everybody feels like they got a shot. I do want to hit on a couple things Jeff said when we come back. Um, right now, Jake, the team that I think fears the most in the NFL would be Green Bay. I, I, I still think yeah, Green Bay is kind argue. of a notch above. And I know they've had struggles in the playoffs. With the Aaron Jones injury not being too severe, I think that's the one team. You look at both leagues – that would be my favorite right now. And they also are the one that, that seems to not have really stubbed their toe just yet at any point where they went out and you just go, wait a minute, they're, they're in a rut here. So we can discuss that. And then again, 8.30 coming up 30, or 33 minutes from now, Dio Dangbo joins the show. It is Kevin Aquari. Put on your helmet. It's about to get real. Jason Benetti. I am so sick of undefeated teams getting disrespected by the college football playoff committee. The hardest thing to do in a football season is win all your games. Cincinnati went on the road and beat Notre Dame. If Cincinnati can't get in, nobody's ever getting in from a group of five conference. Ever. What are we doing? Dan Dockage. Weekdays noon to 3 on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Presented for the people by Caesars Sportsbook. The goblet has dropped. Download it. Must be 21 and up. Our friends at Golden Oak Lending have done it again. I was able to speak with their owners a few weeks back, and they are just great people looking to save you money. And they're ready to help right now and get you refinanced today before the end of the year. Among the many things I love about Golden Oak is no cost for an appraisal. That's right. Simply just by picking up the phone and seeing if they can meet your goals costs absolutely nothing. And who you talk to is going to be a local loan officer right here in Indianapolis. I'm not talking some call center across the country. Golden Oak's experienced local loan officers make refinancing and buying a breeze, guiding you through every step to ensure you never get lost in jargon and numbers. Even if you haven't done anything to your house, your home's value has increased in the last year alone. 
giving you the opportunity to use that equity to finish a home project, pay off credit cards, or even consolidate bills. No matter your unique situation or goals, you have an expert lending partner for life in Golden Oak Lending. Head to goldenoaklending.com right now to see what your home equity can do for you. NMLS 114937, 1.875% fix, 2.952% APR, FHA 15-year mortgage with 20% equity, and approved credit. This is for the men who never settle. The ones who believe only quitters and a game and a tie. The type of guys who choose the bar with the biggest TVs to overcompensate for theirs at home. This is the Lodge mentality. This is Twin Peaks. Are you a fan of Twin Peaks? Sign up for their e-club to stay up to date on all things Twin Peaks and score free stuff. Signing up is easy. Visit TwinPeaksRestaurant.com slash Peaks Club. Twin Peaks. Eats, drinks, scenic views. Hey, JMV, you know, I'll never forget the first time someone pointed out the bald spot of the back of my head. That's why I went to We Grow Hair Indy. Here's Darren Andrews to tell you more. For over 20 years, we've been restoring hair for men and women with every type of hair loss and every ethnicity. No matter the reason for your hair loss, we're here to help. And our friend Rajiv Ram, two-time Olympian and tennis professional, can attest to this. I wanted more hair, and they have the best technology there is for it. We Grow Hair Indy cared about me and did exactly what they said they would. The results have been amazing. I had the multi-unit hair grafting procedure and I loved that they could fill in my thinning hair on top of my head. People tell me all the time how great my hair looks and yours can too. Call now for a free evaluation and grow your hair back. Call 888-724-5129, 888-724-5129 or wegrowhairindy.com. The gold standard in hair restoration. This is how we reinvent banking. Say the money's gone tight in your checking account. Then you crack your phone and the screen goes out. No shame in your game. We got the assist. Huntington Bank, lending money with a twist. Come to us for extra cash when you're strapped because it's free. When you auto pay it back. Introducing standby cash. Extra cash when you need it. Free when you auto pay it back. Huntington, welcome. Without automatic payments. 12% APR. Eligibility requirements apply. Amount available is based on customer eligibility. Learn more at Huntington.com slash standby cash. Of course, she needs a college education, but I don't want her buried in student loans for the rest of her life. It starts here. She needs a school with great resources, but some of these campuses are so big. The School of Health and Human Sciences at IUPUI has the resources of a big university on a campus with a hometown feel. It's a more affordable option with access to career paths in Indy's world-class healthcare and sports entertainment hospitality organizations. At those big schools, I'm worried she'll just be a number. Hey, it starts here. Hey, why not IUPUI? That's what I was thinking. A tourism, event, and sport management degree fits detail-oriented individuals who like to call the shots in a fast-paced environment. Hands-on internships plus dedicated professors give the education and professional contacts needed to land an ideal job after graduating. The School of Health and Human Sciences at IUPUI. It starts here. Learn more at shhs.iupui.edu. When it comes to working at GEICO, our best advocates are our employees, like Michael. But since he is so focused on growing his career, we hired an actor to read his story. If you want a job where you get out as much as you put in, GEICO is the best place to work. Plus, we promote from within, so there are no ceilings placed on your opportunities. They even offer parental leave to full-time employees. So there's nothing stopping him from going all the way to the top. But not too high. He's scared of heights. Ready to start your career, Indy? We're hiring claim sales and service agents. Apply online today at geico.job. indy 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. WIBC HD2 W298BB. WIBC HD3 W228CX. Indianapolis. Join me today from noon to 3. Knicks in New York against the Pacers. We'll talk about that. Also, Chappie's going to join. And we're going to hit on what is a massive week for the Colts. Join me today, noon to 3. It's Kevin and Query. Speaking of rivals, my good friend Tom Brady is here tonight. By the time he is inducted... On 93.5 oh, 107.5 The Fan It's Kevin Bowen, Jake Query Kevin and Query every single morning 7 to 10 a.m. Right here on 93.5 107.5 The Fan We're going to have Colts rookie Dio Dangbo His strip sealed it on Sunday He joins us here in about 25 I, minutes Strip sack, should we at least say that? Like, Not in a strip sack, but like strip the, the, His strip of the football we, That needs elaboration right? Fair 
Fair, yeah. Especially when you're playing Urban Meyer, you never know what what. <laughs> that's you know, right. That's probably. <laughs> I, I'm that's glad right. you clarified that. Yeah. So thank you for. Sure. We we have a real pro uh, finally on this morning show yeah. and uh, Jake Query totally. in studio with us. Uh, we just heard Jeff's call in the previous segment about you know the wide receiver position. And Jake, I know so often hindsight can be very 2020, but I think back in March, at least I'll speak for myself. I wanted to see them do something at wide receiver because, like, didn't we see 10 games into the season this Paris Campbell and this T.Y. Hilton coming? Like, it it didn't take, you know, some, you know, Mother Cleo magic eight ball to predict this. The the good news and the bad news for the Colts is that Michael Pittman, good news, is on the trajectory and the path that you would have hoped going into the year that he would be on, right? Definitely. The bad news for the Colts is that Paris Campbell is on the path that you would have anticipated he was going to be on. I I think that... And T.Y., right? Yeah, T.Y. Hilton, I think... Here's the thing. I think you knew that in this season, which I do believe was T.Y. Hilton's swan song, you know, uh, victory lap, so to speak, in terms of his Colts career... I think they knew that with T.Y. Hilton, anything you got was going to be gravy. But T.Y. Hilton was here, Kevin, as kind of a passing of the torch of your deep ball speed threat in Paris Campbell. And I think that they probably banked too much on the health of Paris Campbell when there is little evidence or was little evidence going into it that Paris Campbell could stay healthy. And that's not a knock on Paris Campbell. I mean, you just never know with some players – the human body is a fascinating thing, right? But the precedent was there that Paris Campbell and health was an issue, and and once again, it has been. Now, the other side of that is, and I think we've talked about this before, again, coincidence more than anything else, clearly, but what is it with former Ohio State players and the Colts, Kevin? <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, going way back, like, I had a tweet at one point about it. I was amazed at the number. If you go back and look at players that are drafted by the Colts out of Ohio State, I think Mike Doss actually has the most games of tenure. Gosh, and he, I think about injuries with his career. And he was a you know he was a Roy Hall, player. Roy, huh. the guy that had the video game addiction. Uh, Quinn Pitcock, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, and that's no joke. I mean, like serious video game addiction. Anthony Gonzalez was one of them, right? Um, is he still senator? No, he stepped down. I, I can't say, remember. I if thought he, I saw something in the news. I, about I don't that. remember if he stepped down or he was voted out. But to your Hilton point about gravy, Jake, and I, and I do think they viewed him in that light. And that was weird how that free agency played out. Remember how you know it looks like Hilton's going to sign with Baltimore. Jim Irsay comes calling with the midnight oil and says, "Hey, we'll, we'll we'll sweeten the deal a little bit." When I saw that, I'm thinking to myself, okay. That means that some combination of Chris Boward and Frank Reich don't view T.Y. Hilton in the same light that Jim Mersey views him. So if that's the case, wouldn't Ballard and or Reich have been more prone to go after another wideout to make sure that if this is the swan song, we know Campbell's injury history, we right. don't think Hilton's a legit number one anymore, we're going to need support for Michael Pittman at some point, and yet they really neglected well, to do that. But let me ask you this, and, and I'm going to put you on the spot here. I don't mean to necessarily, but um, fair point. But the question then would become, who would you have in mind? I thought in free agency there were a couple of levels to whiteouts. Like, yes, you had your Juju Smith-Schuster and your Kenny Galladay's, and I guess T.Y. maybe fell into this group, and I'm forgetting another whiteout or two. Um, kind of those top-tier guys. I wasn't really in the mood for that. But I thought more of kind of, and I'd have to look back at the list, but I think you had some second or third tier guys, or if you wanted to, and I'm not saying that this is necessarily the route that you needed to go, but then you go into the draft, and instead of drafting well, that, a Division two kid in round seven, I, you fair. maybe draft somebody in round four. I, now, I will say this, okay? Guilty as charged on my behalf here. I thought Strom was going to be a player that was going to contribute for them at some point this year, and maybe he still is. But, you know, I remember, like, when Mo Alley Cox first came in, I remember saying, like, at some point this year, Mo Alley Cox is going to make a play for them. And he did. Strom was a guy that, at the beginning of the year, Kevin, I thought to myself, at some point, there is going to be a spot for him to make a contribution to the roster. 
and, and I've been a little surprised that that he has been limited in being in the opportunity to do that. But I'm not in practices. I mean, you know what I mean? Right. I, I thought he would have more of a kind of red zone ish role. Um, hey, six five two twenty. We can't teach it. Let's give him a couple chances in that part of the field. The Colts play wideouts. Desmond Patman right now is playing like ten snaps a game. It's not like the Colts don't have wideouts that are out there for you know whatever a dozen snaps. So I thought he'd be there. They seem pretty adamant that doesn't know the playbook very well and special teams is kind of an issue when when you get there as well. How do you not know the playbook? Is is I think is the Jerry jo- Rogers coming and stealing it off your kitchen table? <laughs> That's a Brady Bunch reference. I think the jump from not playing. Remember, he not only did he play Division Two, Jake. He didn't play college football last year. I think yeah, that still, adds I mean, to it. Like I'm sure his role in Division Two was, hey, just throw the ball up to him and he can go get it. Here, it's you're moving around a whole lot more. Sometimes you're playing outside. Sometimes you're playing inside. I, but your job is to know the playbook. I mean, I would think you, you would be able to go out. And if but I said, know it to the degree that you know it as uh, year five, year six? You know, I think there are certain players, and I'm not saying he's one of them. I think that when Randy Moss was a rookie, I think Randy Moss, when he was a rookie, there were times he went into the huddle in Minnesota and it was like, hey, man, just go out there. Just run out and take a right. We're just going to throw it up. I think there are certain – so to your point, I guess there are certain guys that if you're an athletic enough guy, you just get away with it. But but if you were a player, I, if you were a player that you, that you got drafted and you knew, okay, I've got to I've got to know this playbook. I, I mean, you would think that you would spend eighteen hours a day with that thing, like the Rosetta Stone. Like I would have it literally on audio tape in my car <laughs> and drive around and have the woman saying, like you know, X splits two I'd be three red, falling asleep on four sixty five, and take a right hearing I, that. No, I would. I'm not certain I wouldn't be falling asleep on 465 hearing this. But having said all that, I'm just telling you, like, if, but, if that was your job, wouldn't you find a way to get it done? Sure. I'm not going to question his work ethic right now. What I'm getting at is why are you putting the eggs in the basket of a Division II seventh-round rookie to come in here and provide that support? Like, that's more what I'm getting at is if you thought Hilton was gravy, why not make another move? Because I think right now offensively, if you were going to pinpoint a worry, and I think more of the worries are defensively, but if you're going to pinpoint a worry for this offense down the stretch, I think it's what we saw on Sunday. When Jonathan Taylor is held in check for multiple quarters, does the passing game have enough support for Michael Pittman? Uh, let me read you this. Hey, Jake, I just thought I'd throw this in there, okay? Um, I wanted to let you know that we listened to your radio show on the way to school, and Molly Jacobson is her name, says that uh, Jake has a very satisfying voice. Oh, wow. That's a now, big now, compliment. That, you got to put that on LinkedIn. I don't have a LinkedIn. You don't have a LinkedIn? No. What, what, here's the thing. Or maybe Twitter profile? Well, my Twitter profile, I could put that in there. I, here's my thing. On the, the LinkedIn. You, you do have a very satisfying voice. I don't know about that. I hate my voice. But, well, who but likes you. their voice? I don't, I've I'm, never met a person that likes Luther voice. Vandross? Yeah, I was going to say Michael Buffer. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have, I have Michael no Bolton idea. likes his voice? Yeah. Do you have a LinkedIn isn't LinkedIn that that basically, if I'm not mistaken, LinkedIn is basically, um, oh, what's the the dating app? I can't believe I'm just I'm, Tinder. Yeah, Tinder. LinkedIn is Tinder for employers, right? Like, if your employer sees that you have a LinkedIn, don't they know that that means that you're out there flirting and throwing yourself into the to the mix to try to get a job somewhere else? A little bit of flirting, but I think more showing off of like what you're doing. You would think well, for there's people nothing that have- for me to show off about. I've been fired. You've been fired. You'd think that you know. I think part of being fired is then you must make a LinkedIn. I, I I mean, if I like, here's the thing. If I did a LinkedIn right now, this is what you want to know. What my LinkedIn would say. Here's what my LinkedIn would say. Jake Query, University of Kansas, IUPUI, Indiana <laughs> University, North Central High School, and then it would say, but 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 a Clemson fan can talk about <laughs> cars going fast and. Three hours of like pop culture and sports talk. <laughs> That's it. Satisfying voice. There's don't like, don't, don't sat- forget about that. Satisfying voice. Yes, yes that and is correct. she can endorse you. You know that's Refer- part of, part of LinkedIn. References include Molly, Molly Jacobson. Jacobson endorsing me for voice satisfaction. <laughs> that's right. Other than that, I think it is. There, but here's the thing. Like I I was out of a gig 22 months ago, and I'm like, okay, now I need a job because primarily I need health insurance because you know the bills were mounting. And then I was like, well, there's there's nowhere that can hire. There's only one place i could end up right 
This was the this was the this was the place. I mean, you want to talk about Lifeline? I mean, all, all your you eggs know. in this basket, a hundred percent, no question about it. Uh, we'll have Dio Dengbo here in about fifteen minutes. Let's sneak Matt and Matt want to talk about uh, the draft pick usage for the Colts. What's up, Matt? We get told Ballard is this genius for accumulating draft picks, and that's great. But if we let guys like Autry and Walker go, we had a very good defense last year. We let three starters go, and now with the first-round draft pick, since you've allowed two pass rushers to leave, you can't draft a wide receiver. You have to draft a pass rusher. If they just re-sign Autry last year, instead of drafting Pay, who may be great, you could have taken your number one wide receiver again. I just they, they get these picks, and they either don't retain them or they don't work out. Uh, just looking for your thoughts. Appreciate that, Matt. Thank you for calling. I, I would agree. Uh, not re-signing Danico Autry was a mistake because they wanted to re-sign him. They wanted him back. Tennessee sweetened the deal a little bit, and I thought that was a mistake. And even with re-signing him, I thought you still could have done something receiver. Again, second level. I'm not saying go out there and break the bank, but just some support for Michael Pittman, proven-wise. Uh, tip or, you know, no question about the fact that Danico Autry, there has been a lot of looking back at that like man they should have opened up the bank more to get him there is little question about the fact that Danico Autry this year has been you know what he's been satisfying right if you're a Titans fan very not very for Colts fans and Jake I I think you still could have played the young guys I get this whole like well you needed to see what you had in Tyquan Lewis well to your point earlier Tyquan Lewis has battled injuries and you can still rotate guys in it's D-line you play right. Eight of them a game. Uh, time now, by the way, for a Big O Tire Sports Center update. This Sports Center update on 93.5 and 107.5. The fan is presented by Big O Tires, the team you trust. Yeah, it was a fourth quarter to forget last night for the Indiana Pacers. 92 84, they lose in Madison Square Garden. 10 points in the final period. Again, those are 12 minute quarters for those keeping track at home. They didn't hit a shot in the last seven minutes. They only got to the foul line and made four. Free throws, so they barely even scored down the stretch. Karis Levert afterwards, five of fourteen for Levert. Him afterwards in the struggles. You know, spacing offensively wasn't the best, um, and you know, I had a lot of shots in the paint that I usually make that I like um, for myself. Um, I think the ball stuck a little bit in my hands as well, so it'll just be something we have to look at going forward. But overall, I think we played a great game, man, especially defensively. Um, and we're, we're, you know, we're still learning. Uh, I'm still, you know, getting healthy. This is, what, our third, fourth game where we're all healthy. So uh, I think overall we're pleased. We wanted to get the win, but um, it happens, man. I thought Levert at times looked a little bit too unsettled, Kevin. Like maybe he was trying to force things a little bit too much, exerting too much energy to get space when he actually already had space. Um, The big thing for Indiana last night, in particular in that fourth quarter, Miles Turner, TJ McConnell, Keelan Martin. I realize T.J. McConnell, Keelan Martin are not necessarily your mainstream scoring guys, but they have been lately, and they've given the Pacers good minutes. 11 points combined amongst those three got to get better, especially out of Miles Turner, who, yes, he's a popular subject to point out, but come on, man, one of four, you got to get more field goal attempts out of Miles Turner. When I hear the phrase, the ball got stuck, I also think of little hero ball from Karis LeVert. That's fair. Uh, now, I get it. You know, the Pacers are trying to find a go-to guy late. That's something LeVert has done. But still, I thought last night, really the Knicks, their their defensive pressure was really impressive. It was a great atmosphere in Madison Square Garden, but definitely one the Pacers let get away. Sabonis, 21-15. you know and 15. what a Knickerbocker is? Did I, have I asked you that before? Um, you haven't, but I know you're about to tell me. Do you know? It's a, I mean, it, and I'm not, it's been a while since someone told me, and I and I already forget. I believe a Knickerbocker is a settler, a Dutch settler, in the New York area. I believe I could be wrong in that. Boy, man, the Dutch really got the big win in that <laughs> nickname category. Okay, according to Wikipedia, which is all knowing, uh, a Knickerbocker refers to people or objects from Manhattan. Well, that's it. So where's the Dutch? I, I, I'm telling you, like they're. The mascot for the, the Knickerbocker fella is a little guy. He wears the little yeah, pants, I've, obviously, yeah. right? I know the pictures. It's not Spike Lee. That's not the mascot. <laughs> he, he kind of is now, right? Yes. Oh, here we go. The term Knickerbockers traces its origin to the Dutch settlers who came to the New World. Hallelujah. 
I knew somewhere in my subconscious there was something from my childhood that was worth remembering. Some of my friends refer to this person as Indy's mascot. If I had to say that this is the mascot of Indianapolis, Eddie who White. would you say? Exactly. <laughs> Have we had this conversation no. before? Is that who you were thinking, yes. really? Eddie White. Are you serious? Dead serious. You know, Eddie White's got to carry around a dustpan for all those names he drops. <laughs> for what it's worth. Uh, the greatest postgame show, Eddie White. They will have your coverage after Mark Boyle. He is entertaining. And Pat Boylan on Wednesday. It'll be the Pistons on the road, Hornets on the road, back at home against the Pelicans. That starts 10 of 12 at home. Finally, the Pacers get a stretch here inside of Gamebridge Fieldhouse. No Chris Duarte last night. Right shoulder soreness, so the rookie missed, I think, his first game of the season. Correct. I believe so. Uh, this from Gregory, by the way. LinkedIn is used for networking, providing information about your own company, job searching, and a variety of other things. Okay. Everybody knows about this company, right? I mean, let's not let's not rip on Gregory. He's just simply putting no, out no, there. I'm not ripping on him. I'm just saying, like like job searching. That's what I mean. See, it's like I said. But he also says information about your own company. You want people to know about you. Maybe you're trying to recruit prospective people. Uh, I'm telling you. I think what it means is here's my resume. Swipe left or right. We we work in a very cynical industry where you know tomorrow no doubt. you don't know what's going to happen. No uh, doubt. I, you know my my wife works for a company that just got bought. I'm thinking to myself, geez, well, that's that's a little bit of a different. Like I said, Todd Meyer wanted to know why I haven't decorated my cubicle. Yet. And I'm like, because do you know how easy it is to walk out after you get fired when there's nothing to grab? Right. Nope. Just got one box and the elevator <laughs> button. I still got to press. I got a laptop somewhere underneath the seat of my car you guys gave me six months ago. I'll bring it back tomorrow. The early line Colts and Bills Sunday underdog by seven Indianapolis. One o'clock kick from Western New York. Can't wait to see who the broadcast crew and that is announced later today. You love the broadcast crew. <laughs> that, that is to you very indicative, is it not, of the very, quality of game? Very indicative. Um, you know, Jake, don't look now, but like the Bills have got to keep pace with the Patriots or at least stay above them in the AFC East. They have not played New England yet. So when you look at this game, this is an important game for Buffalo and saying, we don't want to get in, in the wild card picture. Hey, Buffalo would love nothing more than to get a win against the Colts and then have the Colts turn around and do them a solid, right, by making sure that they'd love to they'd love to knock around the Colts but not knock them completely unhealthy because they need the Colts to turn around and obviously get one over New England. And the flip of that, the Colts would want Buffalo Correct. to beat New England with those right. meetings still happening twice here to end the year. Uh, the Bucks next Sunday... Uh, they it doesn't look like a lot of Vita Vea, one of the better run stopping defensive tackles in the league. So looking ahead to next week, that's a big loss for the Buccaneers. Between as Buffalo they come to and Lucas New England, Oil. Kevin, which of those two teams to you seems at right now, which one strikes more fear in you? I think it's still Buffalo. And if we weren't in this market, I don't even know if we would debate that. That's probably true, but New England's offense is starting to hit some cylinders that and Buffalo has shown there is the possibility of them hitting a rut, right? Offensively yeah, speaking. It, it is. I also think it's just how much of this is a two-week stretch that we have this mindset. But to be fair, what New England did yesterday or Sunday, I mean, uh, no, I don't. <laughs> that was damn impressive. And listen, we talked about it with Jeff Saturday like a month ago or something like that. But, you know, Mac Jones, yes, he walked into a very good situation. But, man, you got to give him a lot of credit. He's got... He is really accurate in where he puts the football. Jake, I thought he was one of the hardest quarterback prospects ever to evaluate. He played with a bunch of creative players Correct. in college. Give him credit, like you said, for what he's done. New England, by the way, Thursday night football at Atlanta. So get your dirty bird, uh, Jamal Anderson, ready because uh, the Colts need the Falcons in that one. Tonight, Purdue takes on Wright State at Mackey. That's a 7 o'clock tip from West Lafayette. IU's got St. John's tomorrow night as the Big East Big Ten Gavit games continue. Butler, a part of that. They're going to host Michigan State. So some really nice non-conference games there in Indy over at Hinkle and then Bloomington tomorrow night. And by the way, Ashley wanted me to mention, shout out to IU women uh, up to number four that? in the polls. They beat Kentucky. Saw a great sign. I think Dan retweeted this yesterday. Um, at least the Kentucky women will come to Assembly Hall. That's right. I, you know what? That, I, I watched some of that game Um Indiana, that was a, a relatively close game in the first half. Indiana got like a half-court shot going into 
the intermission and then really pulled away in the second half. And they but bring they back are, like everybody yeah. from that team that went pretty far in the tournament last year. So shout out to Terry Moore and regional finals, and right? The Hoosiers, yeah, Arizona, right? I think Arizona beat That's them. That's right. Yep. Last year, all right. Quick college football rundown: IU Minnesota Saturday. That is a I want to say three thirty kickoff. Might be noon. I got to double check that. Minnesota favored by five. Senior day in Bloomington. Purdue's at Wrigley Field taking on Northwestern. They're favored by nearly two touchdowns in that one. Senior day in South Bend as well. Notre Dame's got Georgia Tech 18 point favorite. Notre Dame's best player, Kyle Hamilton, officially ruled out for the year. That'll be interesting to see these college football rankings tonight if Notre Dame gets in the mix. Um, and I should say, ruled out for the rest of the regular season. Brian Kelly made it clear yesterday if they somehow got in the playoff. Hamilton could still be available. Notre Dame got some assistance by Oklahoma getting beat, but for the most part, you know, the top, what, five or six, probably going to stay true to form, right? Right. The big thing that Notre Dame needs down the stretch, they need Oregon to lose to either Utah this week or Utah again in the Pac-12 title game. And really, Jake, your team, the team that you like the best right now, Ohio State, if they can kind of just take care of business in the Big Ten, then really the help that Notre Dame needs, again, is Oregon and just, I think, the Big 12 to kind of beat each other up. If that happens... We'll see how it all plays out. But I'm still, telling you, man, Ohio State's going to win it all. You know, right now, they are the second favorite. I thought Alabama would still be ahead of them. Right now, Ohio State is favored above Alabama. Yeah, I'm telling you, Ohio State's going to win it all. Now, they might have to play Alabama because it may be 2-3 depending on what happens. But now, that SEC th- title game. Would Alabama close. get knocked out if Georgia beats them in the SEC title game? I mean, two loss Alabama? I would think. Unless that, it's on like an overtime field goal, maybe. Right, but no, right. I, I think if... Yeah, I think if Alabama loses, they are likely out. By the way, speaking of in, Dio Dangbo is in in terms of being on the show, at least. That's in about five minutes. You're listening to Kevin Aquari. Dan versus Fan, sponsored by DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Download the DraftKings app. Use code 1075 FAN to get in on all the action. Sports Center updates on the fan are brought to you by Big O Tires. Black Friday savings are here. Buy three, get one free on Mesa tires. Save 100 instantly on Cooper tires and 140 instantly on Michelin tires. Big O Tires, the team you trust. You know, I, I know it might sound crazy, but two weeks later, I think I'm still feeling a little bit of pain from hauling my daughter and nephew around in the old wagon on Halloween. And if you're dealing with chronic joint pain or not having success with steroids but trying to avoid surgery, thankfully there is a better way to attack it, and it is now available from the medical professionals at QC Kinetics. At QC Kinetics, we've got new therapies, advanced, all-natural, natural, regenerative treatments that can not only just give you relief, but also can restore and repair damaged tissue so you can have lasting relief. If you've got joint pain due to arthritis, knee pain, hip pain, shoulder pain, don't just think the old ways of dealing with pain are the only ways. You need to learn more about these new biological therapy solutions. So call now for a free consultation. QC Kinetics, 463-235-7160. These remarkable new treatments increase mobility, decrease pain, help restore tissue. They actually encourage your body to heal itself. So call now and learn more today, 463-235-7160. That's QC Kinetics, 463-235-7160. Hey, it's Big Joe for Ryan Kelly, the home loan expert. You know, I called Ryan a couple of years ago at 317-550-1515, but you can also go to the website, thehomeloanexpert.com. And what I wanted to do, I wanted to lower my term, and I also wanted to pay less money every single month. And I got both of those things accomplished, but you can also do a cash out refinance. If you're a service member and go to heroloan.com, Ryan Kelly can help you out there. And also, if you belong to a union, Any union, like the Teamsters or the electrical workers or the pipe fitters or the carpenters or even the police officers, if you belong to a union and you close a loan with the home loan expert, they'll go ahead and give you a $500 gift card at closing. You can't beat Ryan Kelly. And right now, with the financial sector in such flux, we've got interest rates on the rise because of inflation. You just don't know what's going to happen out of Washington these days. You need to make sure that you are protected. Get a hold of Ryan Kelly right now. Do it today. 317 550 15 or go to the home loan expert.com. There has never been a better time to work at Amazon. They are offering sign on bonuses up to $3,000 and pay up to $24.50 per hour. Many jobs come with great benefits that start on your first day, and Amazon offers a variety of paths for career growth. They have flexible shifts and schedules, and you can start in as little as seven days, so you'll be earning extra income just in time for the holidays. Go to amazon.com slash apply to get started today. Amazon is proud to be an equal opportunity employer. 
Spectrum Mobile is reinventing wireless again. Get unlimited on two plus lines for $29.99 a month per line. No contracts, no added taxes or fees. Includes nationwide 5G. Save up to 60% with Spectrum Mobile. Get unlimited on two plus lines for $29.99 a month. Call 855-438-2999 or visit a store near you. Offer valid for new customers on two plus unlimited lines. Spectrum Internet required. Savings based on two line comparison of unlimited plans among major national carriers as of 9 2021. Prepaid excluded. Restrictions apply. The Ride with JMV. Having a fantastic season. Michael Pittman Jr. with us. How much do you play off of the threat on every single play that Jonathan Taylor has become? It really just, they got to stack that box. When they do that, we take shots. When we're going off, and they got to drop people deep and then just hand it off to him, and he's going to take it 80 yards. Dude is blazing fast. The Ride with JMV. Weekdays, 3 to 6. On 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Man, I love BG. Love Listening to Kevin and Query on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Some nappy roots from Mark Dykton bringing us back on a Tuesday morning. Dio Dangbo, Colts rookie, going to join us here shortly. Do you know how tall he is? He, I'm going to guess, he is one of the larger human beings I've seen in the NFL on an NFL field. I'm going to guess 6'6. Six, six. You are correct. Would you like to guess his weight? Boy, this is creepy. I hope he's not on the air just yet. 275. 280. Uh, come on, man. Like, did you work at Kings Island? <laughs> no. You know, if I had to work at a theme park, it'd be Holiday World. 6'6", 276. Oh, boy. Uh, he joins us now on the Payless Liquors Hotline. I really hope he didn't hear that. <laughs> I'd like to know, actually, you know, one of my favorite games to play is... And, uh, Dio Dangbo, maybe I'll play this with you, is how well do you know your own bio off the Colts website? For example, Dio, do you know, uh, Kevin just said it, do you know what they list you in terms of your height and weight? Uh, probably around like 6'6", six, six, 275, something like that. <laughs> 276, yeah. <laughs> very, yeah. very very accurate. You though. two are in cahoots with one another. <laughs> Dio <laughs> Dangbo, Colts rookie, joins us here on Kevin and Query. Dio, you, um, you tweeted out the highlight of your strip sack on Sunday, and the the quote to it was, if only you knew what it took to get here. Uh, if you don't mind, kind of take a peek behind the curtain with us, and, and what did it take? I, I don't know if that's an Achilles injury reference or just in general, uh, but what did it take to get to that moment you had on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a reference to uh, kind of all the adversity I've had or kind of gone through, I mean, throughout life and definitely in the last year with this Achilles injury and just kind of uh, the transition to the NFL. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's really kind of, I was really kind of talking about just the the whole journey to that moment and the kind of living out a, a dream that, I mean, I've always dreamed of as a kid being able to make plays on Sundays and that's kind of what happened. So, um, yeah, it's really an accumulation of my entire life and definitely this last year dealing with this injury and everything it took to get back and get back playing off of the injury. If you had to narrow it down to the hardest part within that Achilles rehab, whether it's late January, I don't know, late late in the process, what is the most diff or what was the most difficult part of that process? Uh, for me, I feel like it was definitely the beginning of the pr- well. Yeah, definitely like the beginning of the process, not being able to like walk, having to learn how to use crutches, uh, like walking a boot, things like that. That was definitely really difficult. And you kind of, until you have an injury like that, you really take walking for granted. I used to say, I hate walking. I wish we could just teleport places, but <laughs> same. I really, uh, I really kind of saw the value in just being able to walk and take your time and just trying to see the g- good things and the little things that we have. So um, I feel like that was definitely the hardest part is just, kind of trying to stay mentally uh, strong and mentally engaged in my like, working out and getting better while not even being able to walk. So, Did you feel, Dio, a bit of, I guess, a responsibility to justify the Colts' belief in your ability to come back from the injury? Because I'm sure you knew and had a faith that you would be back 
but there were probably NFL teams that were hesitant with you, and the Colts were not. Did yeah. that resonate with you? Yeah, no, it, absolutely. I mean, I absolutely am beyond grateful to the Colts organization for believing in me, uh, regardless of uh, my injury status at the time. So, um, like you said, I do absolutely feel like I have something to prove uh, to the Colts organization, to the team, and to the to the fan base, and to the entire league. Um about my, my ability to come back from the injury and my ability to perform at a high level uh, in this league. So, I mean, I feel like this is just the beginning of that, and I'm I'm just working on getting to back to 100% uh, injury-wise, talent-wise, just getting more used to football. So I'm excited to be able to just continue to get better and improve. He's Dio Dangbo, Colts rookie, had the strip sack to clinch it on Sunday against Trevor Lawrence and the Jags here on Kevin and Quarry. Dio, talking to Eric Fisher a few weeks back, he mentioned kind of the final 10% of the Achilles rehab um, he has heard is kind of the most difficult, like getting that explosive element back. Um, is that something you've experienced? And I guess if you had to put a percentage, what would you say you're at right now? No, yeah, it absolutely. Um, it's definitely kind of the hardest thing to get back to that little explosion at the end. Um, and it's kind of something that, you have to play football to be able to get back. So it's not really something you can get back before you're kind of in the game. So um, I'm definitely working my way back, and it's getting better every day. I don't know as far as percentage. Um, I mean, there's good days and bad days. Some days you're more sore. Some days you're not. So um, it's up and down, but it's definitely close. It's definitely getting there, and I'm definitely uh, trusting it more. So, Hey, Dio, I get fascinated with the story of guys like away from the field, right? Your, your story is one that is, you know, it is fascinating. Um, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't. I want to make sure I don't misspeak here. Are one you? or both of your parents are immigrants from Nigeria, correct? Yeah, both of my parents. Okay. So I would assume that that means that you still have some family in Nigeria. Have you been there? Have you visited? Yeah, I visited uh, my junior year of high school. So it's been a couple of years, but uh, I have gone... Uh, relatively recently did that experience you know how much did that I, I would imagine you have to have a tremendous pride obviously in your roots but just seeing that seeing a different culture seeing a different country and knowing the opportunities that now are here for you as a national football league player how much did it fuel or drive you or did it no absolutely i mean you see being able to see other countries and how other people live across the world i mean it really makes you thankful for what you have and it kind of makes you understand that there's there's a bigger picture to than to the the small issues you have in your life. You know, the, the things we think on a think about on a day to day basis, kind of here in the Western world or in America, we kind of see as end all be all problems, and we don't really think about the issues that people are going going the issues that are going on across the world, which is really the majority of the population. You know, so I mean, it definitely helps you kind of realize how blessed you are and definitely with this opportunity to be able to play in the national football league is something that's obviously unique to America. So, I mean, it's really a blessing. And I mean, I thank my parents for, for putting in the hard work and moving across the globe to give my, give me and my brother a, a better opportunity to succeed in our lives and better opportunities for education and everything ongoing. So, I mean, I'm really just thankful to them and I'm, it's it's just it's a blessing to be able to be in this position, knowing where, uh, kind of like where my parents came from. You know, it's interesting because your fellow rookie and a guy that I think a lot of people here are hoping to see you kind of, you know, be super twin power activation in terms of the defensive line and Quiddy Pay, has a similar story. I mean, his parents, I believe, it's Liberian or maybe his grandparents, uh, refugees as well. Have you guys yeah. discussed that at all? I mean, yeah, we talk about our cultures. Uh, I mean, really can be on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just kind of something that's part of our lives. I mean, it, it may not be specifically a, a detailed conversation about the history of our families, but, I mean, uh, our families and our cultures definitely come out in our everyday lives, and it's something that we talk about, joke about, whatever it is. So, um, yeah, absolutely. We definitely have spoken about kind of the similarities between our two upbringings. Vanderbilt product, Texas native for high school, Dio Dangbo, joining us here on Kevin and Query.
Dio, um, I would, you know, following Chris Ballard, now five drafts, I'm not sure if there's a prospect he's loved more than you. I believe during the draft process, one of their scouts came up with the nickname Hurricane Dio. Uh, your <laughs> thoughts on if that nickname has sticking potential here in Indianapolis? I mean, it seems like it does. So <laughs> It seems like everyone likes it, and I, I, I have no problem with it, so... Um, I mean, I'm just trying to live up to my name and be able to help the team. So um, if, that, if that's what the fan base wants it to be, that's what it is. So. <laughs> now, I, I must say, now, earlier you said that, you know, you would hope to kind of teleport and, you know, walking can be stressful, which you know, certainly it is. Uh, but they were praising your, your motor. So that, I guess, uh, is a big part of it, right? Just the effort that you play with? Yeah, not for sure. Uh, in, in college, that was something I learned kind of early in college that uh, – I mean, if you make a mistake, if you're doing it 100, 100 miles per hour, you can kind of fix your, fix the mistake you made. So um, I kind of tried to just learn that as long as the, between the whistles you need to be going, you need to be going hard. So um, that's definitely something our defense preaches beyond anywhere I've ever been. So um, I kind of prided myself on being able to hustle in college, and now I'm having to take it up two more steps in this league and, and hustle at a, at a rate that you may not have in college. So, I mean, the ex- expectations of this level are just higher and the expectations in this defense are high. So that's just something I'm trying to meet and uh, kind of fit in with the defense and how our identity is based around hustle and flying to the ball. Dio, when you were at Vanderbilt, it, it's funny, Nashville is such a cool city. And I, being in Nashville, I thought to myself, if I went to Vanderbilt, I'd last two weeks before I'd get in trouble by just like listening to live music and being on Broadway all the time. Uh, yeah. What about Vanderbilt appealed to you, and how close did you take a look at Purdue, who who apparently was one of them in your recruiting process? Yeah, so um, for me, so my older brother went to Vanderbilt, and um, he also played football. We had never played football together on a team before, so that was kind of a big factor in going there. And then him being there, I just ended up being around the coaching staff, being around the team on campus all the time. And once Alfred started rolling in to Vanderbilt, Alfred, um, it was kind of, I kind of always knew in the back of my head, but I mean, I was still trying to be open to the process. And my mom definitely was leaning towards me going to Vanderbilt, obviously a great academic school and everything, and definitely made it easier on her, us being in the same place. So, um, yeah, I mean. Uh, well, academically speaking, what was your major at Vanderbilt? Because, like, Vanderbilt's no joke, man. I mean, you're talking about one of the great yeah. universities in the country. Yeah, my so my major is medicine, health, and society. So. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, I he's was gonna, gonna have a LinkedIn yeah, one day, say, Jake. You know, that's, probably <laughs> medicine, health, and society. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's a far cry from an English major at IEPUI. And, uh, <laughs> you know Dio, I mean? uh, before we let you go, favorite thing about Indianapolis so far? Uh, my favorite thing about Indianapolis, besides the snow you saw Sunday morning to greet you on November fourteenth. Yeah, the good early in the year snow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my favorite thing about Indy, probably all the roundabouts. <laughs> oh, man. So you you know. Carmel, yeah, I was going to say, you, you must be a Hamilton County resident up there. Yep, up here on the north side. There's definitely a lot of roundabouts everywhere. I've never seen anything like it, but I kind of like it. You know, someone that grew up in Carmel, I hated the construction of it, but nowadays, Jake, whew, highly efficient. Oh, the roundabouts yeah. drive me nuts, man. Before I know it, highly all of a sudden efficient. I'm in Crawfordsville. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> If you're not paying attention, you'll end up on the wrong side. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly right. right. Did I just go in a full circle here? That doesn't happen. <laughs> Dio, just so you know, not paying attention is not typically a characteristic of a medicine, health, and society major at Vanderbilt. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Dio Adangbo, again, the strip sack that iced things on Sunday. It was an awesome highlight. Your reaction, I think, spoke to your tweet as well, just what that meant to you, Dio. We hope for a healthy end to your rookie season and hopefully more of those big plays. Thanks for joining us, man. No, thank you thank you for having me. I appreciate it. That's Dio Dangbo right there. Again, the second round pick out of Vanderbilt. Pretty impressive, man. I mean, um, like I said, I mean, when I was in college, three things I didn't know about at all, medicine, health, or society, right? Right, so like, or Vanderbilt, I don't believe, was an application process for Jake Query. <laughs> that was not I'm going to go out on a limb there, yeah. No, I took one of those huge phone book looking things that had colleges in it and i went all the way to the back to the least competitive section and those were the schools to which i applied nate atkins indianapolis star new writer for the star covering the colts joins us next 
This is how we reinvent banking. Every week or two, your paycheck comes through. Steady like a stopwatch, easy to view. But if your bank knows that your checks will drop like clockwork, can't they speed it up, huh? Enter Huntington, punchline please, where your paycheck's delivered up to two days early. Get your paychecks up to two days early. That's how we reinvent banking. Huntington, welcome. Direct deposit and eligibility requirements apply. Learn more at Huntington.com slash early pay. We've got basketball on our minds. With football already being back, there are tons of action over on Prop Swap. For those that don't know, Prop Swap is the only place in Indiana where you can buy and sell sports props. It is the place for the best odds in the country. The arrival of basketball has all sorts of NBA team and player props available, plus an intriguing college basketball season for our local teams, which is an avenue that you can explore if you're looking for a little extra rooting interest over on PropSwap. One of the things I love the most about PropSwap is that you can cash your ticket even if your player or your team does not win. Once the odds of that ticket has shrunk, that's when you can put it up for sale and you can sell a ticket at any point during a game or season. Remember, if you're looking for the best odds in the country, look no further. PropSwap is a way to win bigger at sports betting. There's never been a better time to join. Use promo code FREE100 to receive a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. Check out PropSwap.com or download the free PropSwap app today. Hey, guys. No pressure here, but if you really want to make this the best holiday ever, ask her already. What's more romantic than a holiday proposal? Come to Shane Company to see our amazing selection of unique engagement rings, crafted to last forever. Our warranty is free for a lifetime, and it even covers the center stone. No matter your budget, we'll help you create the perfect ring. We also have rings already set with a center stone, ready to go. And let's talk about center stones. All of our diamonds are conflict-free and natural, handpicked for their beauty. And Tom Shane personally selects our rubies and sapphires in Bangkok. We have so many center stones to choose from. Plus, we're a direct importer, which means we pass the savings on to you. All right, guys, make it happen. Book a virtual or an in-store appointment with a non-commissioned jewelry consultant or just drop by the store. Check our website for hours. Now you have a friend in the jewelry business, Shane Company and Shaneco.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Kelly with TheHomeLoanExpert.com. This year, our average client received over $52,000 with an easy cash-out refinance. What would you do with an extra $52,000? Pay off those high-interest rate credit cards? Maybe start a business? Or knock out those home improvement projects? Let's make those dreams a reality today. Mortgage rates are near historic lows. Apply for your cash-out refinance today at... The Home Loan Expert dot com. The Home Loan Expert LLC, NMLS number thirteen twenty six two forty one. This is for the men who never settle, the ones who believe only quitters and a game and a tie. The type of guys who choose the bar with the biggest TVs to overcompensate for theirs at home. This is the Lodge mentality. This is Twin Peaks. It's the most wonderful time of the year when the weather is cold and holiday parties are coming soon. Turn your annual holiday party up a notch and host it at Twin Peaks, an unforgettable experience that might be tough to remember. Twin Peaks, eats, drinks, scenic views. For the first time in the history of Hard Knocks, HBO and NFL Films are teaming up for an in-season edition of the Emmy-winning sports reality franchise. Hard Knocks in-season, the Indianapolis Colts, follows the Colts as they navigate the challenges of an NFL season and battle for a spot in the playoffs. This is going to be behind-the-scenes footage of your favorite team like you've never seen before. The weekly docu-series premieres Wednesday at 10 p.m. on HBO Max. The holidays are doubly important this year, so make your celebrations doubly special. At Kroger, we've got a huge selection of high-quality meats on top of fresh, natural produce, like fresh, never-frozen prime-grade beef and our Simple Truth Organic Brussels sprouts, or delicious king crab legs with our private selection gourmet potatoes. I had to say that doubly fast. Kroger, fresh for everyone. It's time for fresh, crisp apples. And right now, Honeycrisp apples are a special deal at only $1.27 a pound with your card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. at 107.5. The Fan. Kevin Bowen, Jake Query, 93.5, 107.5. The Fan, available on YouTube as well. You can stream us via the website or the app. Always a lively 
chat even in the mornings in the on morning, YouTube? Knowing that we're going to be on the YouTube deal, do you shower or do you just throw the hat on? I throw the hat on. I don't do sense of smell come across. on the, I'm not worried about you smelling me or Mark. Um, so you don't shower? I'm good, no. Uh, and you have a wide array of hats. You've you've worn a different hat every day. So for, how many hats do you have? You're in Scotty Johnston category of number really? of hats. I yeah. feel like I have kind of some repeats that I pull out. Um, I don't know, seven, eight? Okay. Yeah. What What is that hat? I meant to ask you I that earlier. See what I'm wearing. Um, Before we get to Nate Atkins here, let's see. Uh, our YouTubers. Oh, this can is see my it. Shelbyville Golden Bears. Oh, nice. Wow. Why? Excellent question. Thanks for asking. I when um, I lived in Shelbyville as a kid. We my family lived in Shelbyville when I was born. We moved to Indianapolis the summer before my kindergarten year. Both my parents are from Indy, but my dad worked in Shelbyville. Um, <clears throat> during quarantine, one day I got bored and was like, I'm just going to go drive through Shelbyville. And in driving through Shelbyville, I found a barber shop that was open when like no one else was. Shocker in Shelbyville, and the guy did like the best job ever, like cutting my hair and giving me a shave, the whole deal. And across the street was like a sports memorabilia store, and I'm like, I'm going to go buy myself a Shelbyville Golden Bears hat. And so I went. Ironically enough, after the best haircut ever, I went and bought a hat. Nice. Now, so good that you're continuing to go down 74 I do Ford, still or? go down. Every two weeks, I go down and get a haircut. Do you really? I do, yeah. God, that's incredible. Yep. Urban uh, Urban Haircutters is the name of the place. And, um, yeah, the, Alex is the guy that does my hair. He's awesome. I'm sure Nate Atkins is thrilled to listen to this conversation. Right. Um, our first time talking with the new indie star beat writer for the Indianapolis Colts. He's alongside Joel Erickson. We figured it'd be a good time to have him on, I believe, week two. So, Nate, uh, welcome to Indianapolis, and welcome to Kevin and Query. Thanks, guys. Good to be with you. And, yeah, I'm just uh, diving into this team, trying to play catch-up mode as they're kind of in the meet of their season and all of a sudden in the meet of the AFC race, too, so it's been fun. Okay, so here's this to me would be a challenge. I mean, I, I've had it before in my career where I got airdropped in all of a sudden to cover a team like halfway through. And, and it is, admittedly, Nate, and a lot of credit to you because it's head on a swivel time, right? I mean, you're trying to figure out – uh, who's a good soundbite, who's not, what's the storyline, whatever else. For you personally in trying to get a real feel for the organization, give us the perspective, and I hate to say from a newcomer, but from a newcomer standpoint, what is the biggest for you, like the biggest question mark of getting to understand and getting to know the Colts? Yeah, so coming in from the outside, I mean, what I knew about the Colts was obviously they have some – big time players on both sides of the ball that I think are kind of becoming cornerstones for them. Uh, whether it's on offense, you've got, you know, obviously Jonathan Taylor and Quentin Nelson, and all of a sudden Michael Pittman is starting to join that group. And so you see the way those three kind of marry together and can kind of get this offense moving. And then defensive side of the ball, you've got DeForest Buckner and you've got Darius Leonard and those guys can create plays that can stop the run. And yet within all of that, what, what seems to be kind of missing is uh, the element of stopping the pass. And so, uh, that's just not necessarily how this team's built yet when they've got these rookie pass rushers like uh, Dio Adengbo and uh, Quiddy Pay who are coming along, but they're still rookies. And then in the secondary, all of a sudden now, you add on top of a bunch of injuries, whether it's Xavier Rhodes or both safeties. And so it's just a very interesting spot right now where they're kind of leaning on these stars who are also dealing with some injuries when it comes to you know Nelson and Buckner and Leonard. And they're they're just trying to survive what's going on on the back end of their defense, which was never really built to carry this team anyway. But now is trying to deal with two backup safeties in the league where uh, teams like to really air it out, and when they play in a dome. So just really fascinating to see how they go week to week, just trying to kind of hold on in a in a passing league in a spot where they they weren't necessarily built to thrive, but they're building other areas to overcome it. Um, and, and especially with a guy like Jonathan Taylor, when when he and Quinn Nelson are going, um, the way those two can kind of combine together and keep opposing defenses off the field, it's just kind of a very interesting uh, kind of week-to-week matchup thing based on the kind of quarterbacks and passing games they're facing. He is at Nate Atkins underscore on Twitter. Nate Atkins, the new Indy Star beat writer covering the Colts, joins us here on the Payless Lakers Hotline. Nate, I, I honestly think Gannett probably should have paid you triple for your first game being that Colts-Jags game that you had to witness on Sunday. But nonetheless, you you wrote a great story oh. on the uh, Carson Wentz to Michael Pittman pass. At the time, Like I was like, wow, that's a really good play. Going back and watching that conversion on third and seven, boy, I'm kind of in awe of just Wentz's ability to keep it alive and then obviously Pittman to get the toe tap there. 
that was a play that, again, at the time, I don't think I gave it as much credit as I probably should have, and I'm glad that you did the due diligence with that story in the paper. Yeah, honestly, I think I kind of had the same reaction. I mean, I remember watching and just saying, saying, wow, that was like a, a great throw and obviously a play they had to have. But then when I actually decided to make that what I wanted to write about, and I'm actually talking to Michael Pittman and understand how he saw the play coming is what, what kind of opened my eyes to it because he's lined up in the slot. He's facing the safety, and he's just playing to go deep. And he sees immediately that that safety is blitzing. And based on where they are in the field, they're on the right hash, and that safety is coming from uh, from the field side. And he he just had this understanding that the only way this play is going to work is if Carson is able to see it quickly, bail out to the right, and just keep scrambling. Because they had Jonathan Taylor in to protect, but the, the Jaguars were really smart this game. They were bringing more guys than you could block and they just didn't trust a lot of the Colts receivers to uh, get open and, and win in those matchups, and they were mostly right, except on that play where Michael Pittman realizes that, turns his uh, seam route into more of an over route on the sideline, and uh, just shows you the kind of the trust that Carson and uh, Pittman have built to where uh, he can just kind of look and find him, and, and Carson's always willing to kind of extend the play and keep it alive, but he now has this 6'4 receiver with a 36-inch vertical who can go up and make those plays. This one, he was opening up that it wasn't a crazy acrobatic catch, but it still shows you the trust he has to keep looking, keep looking, don't throw it away, make the play happen, and that's kind of the approach Carson had all day long, for better or for worse, and on that play it saved them. Hey, Nate, quick question. You used to cover the Lions. How bad did that suck? (laughs) You know, it's funny because you mentioned coming into a season uh, in the middle of it, and I came in the middle of their 2016 season, and I want to say I got there and they won their first four games when I was covering it. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah, they they, they paid the ring of honor. Salary. Yeah. yeah. Ring I've of honor, Nate Atkins. Yeah. I tweeted that I'd never seen the Lions lost before, and I was a month into the job. So, <laughs> um, so that was incredible. It certainly went downhill a little bit after that. Um, you know, we went from Jim Caldwell to Matt Patricia, and, you know, and they, of course, didn't didn't end up uh, winning in the playoffs. But my first year there, I did cover a wild card game in, in Seattle. So, um, I, if, for what it was worth, I mean, the Jim Caldwell era was kind of the best period for the Detroit Lions, really, since the Super Bowl. So, yeah, it was fun. Okay, uh, Nate Atkins, you used to cover the Bears. How bad did that suck? Oh, gee. <laughs> Just well, I had to cover a, had to cover a, a coaching search after one season there, so that was not a lot of fun. That's when they went from Mark Tressman to John Fox, and uh, yeah, that was that was certainly a weird time. You know, the, the interesting thing is each team I keep covering always has this quarterback who's sort of polarizing has been traded. It went from Jay Cutler to Matthew Stafford to Carson Wentz, so it's just like I'm always around these quarterbacks that either just amaze you with the plays they make or they just make <laughs> dumbfounded plays and they get traded. You know, so. kidding aside, Nate, it is true, though, and I think that we lose sight of this. When it really comes down to it, covering teams in the NFL, there are certainly a lot of things that just kind of translate from one franchise to the next, right? Because it's the same – the faces might be different, but the formula – for trying to become a winning franchise is the same across the board, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, every franchise, what's fun about the NFL is every franchise is kind of finding their own way. They find a little bit different identity, something other than the passing game that they want to be kind of really good at. But yet the passing game is always there as the thing they want to kind of uh, get really good at. And they're all finding different paths because, you know, it's, it's a lot about how do you acquire these quarterbacks and the Bears and the, the Colts both traded for one. They felt like, you know, where they were in the draft and where they were at that time, um, they needed to just go trade for a guy who maybe wasn't working out somewhere else, Jay Cutler and Carson Wentz. And then, you know, the Lions were very different where they got the number one overall pick. They got Matthew Stafford, but, you know, they ended up giving him a big deal, realizing maybe this isn't quite a top five quarterback, but it's a pretty good quarterback. How do we support that? And, yeah, you absolutely watch that everything these these franchises are doing at the end of the day is building something around those quarterbacks to bolster their strengths and try and cover up their weaknesses and do the best they can. Nate, last one for me. And, again, Nate Atkins, new Indy Star beat writer for the Colts, joins us here on Kevin and Query. Um, if you had to narrow it down to kind of one player, maybe one thing, that'll be the X factor in the Colts potentially making the playoffs here down the stretch. Um, again, I know it's probably a bit unfair considering you've covered this team for two weeks, but from what you do know, you seem to have a great knowledge base. Who would you put or what group would you put in that uh, category? 
Yeah, I mean, I think Carson Wentz is the easiest answer for that because it's a quarterback-driven league. It's a passing league, and he's got to find a way to keep making plays like the one we talked about to Pittman without you know, going so far as to create danger and, and kill the team like he did against the Titans a few weeks before that. But an answer that's a little less obvious but still very present out there, I think, is Quiddy Pay. And you're seeing him come together the past two weeks, getting lots of pressure, playing from the left and the right side. And then this past week, you know, got his first sack, got three quarterback hits, and he's been frustrated that, that the sacks haven't been there for a first-round pick and that he's been hobbled by a hamstring and by an ankle injury. Um, but he's learning to fight through it because that's, that's kind of the makeup of this team, a lot of guys doing that. And he's just getting a lot more confident. He's getting a lot more knowledgeable as this talented player who really wasn't used in, as a pass rusher as much as you would like to think at, at Michigan. And so if we're talking about the secondary issues, and a lot of these are not fixable. These are guys – that were not drafted super high that are playing because of injuries and because of you know lack of other investments. It's it's just going to be what it is on the back end to some degree. It's why they play so much zone. They're just trying to do whatever they can to make up for that. They've got to get pressure, and they've got to get it off the edge and in the middle. And I think you can bank on getting something in the middle, at least DeForest Buckner drawing double teams for other players. But to really make it work, you got to get something off the edge. And Quiddy Pay is starting to show that. He's starting to feel that. If he can play like he has the past two weeks, the rest of the season, and stay healthy, which is still a big if, you know, I think the Colts have a real chance to kind of survive that back end enough to complement an offense that, for the most part, has gotten into gear. So I definitely think it's Quiddy Pay. At Nate Atkins on Twitter, that's N-A-T-E-A-T-K-I-N-S, and then the underscore, at Nate Atkins underscore on Twitter. Nate, welcome to town. Appreciate the time. We look forward to talking to you as the season progresses for the Colts. Thanks, guys. Happy to be here and happy to do it anytime. All right, Thanks, Nate, Nate Atkins, Indianapolis star. Up next, back to last night's fourth quarter house of horrors, but some good things as well for the Pacers, and now perhaps a reprieve for the next three games. Jeremiah Johnson will join us to talk about exactly that as Kevin and Quarry hits the 9 o'clock hour here, 93.5, 107.5 The Fan. Get to Carx today. Buy two tires. Get two tires for free with the purchase of our premium installation package. Receive an additional $70 on the purchase of Continental Tires. Carx Tire and Auto Online. Carx.com today. Now, you don't get to play as much as the offense and defense, but it must be cool to be called special teams. It just sounds good. What team are you on? The special team. That's tight, right? Oh, if you're a fan of special teams, you can just bet on those. My sportsbook app has prop bets so have at it, people. It's a special app, people. Must be 21. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Well, Ryan Kelly is the Home Loan Expert, and you can reach him at 317-550-1515 or just go to thehomeloanexpert.com. And, Ryan, there are a lot of Hoosier families out there right now worried about money. You offer a cash-out refinance option that can help take those worries away. Absolutely, and i got to tell you, Big Joe, it's probably one of our most popular loans right now. Sure, we're doing a lot of purchases and helping people get into the home of their dreams, and we're doing a lot of those easy rate and term refinances where we just go in and lower your interest rate. But I mean it when I tell you, probably the most popular loan we're doing right now is that cash out refinance. And why wouldn't it be? Think about it. Mortgage interest rates are sitting near these 50 year lows and we're locking loans in the low 2% range. And home values are skyrocketing, which means you have a ton of equity just sitting there. Apply for an easy cash out refinance. Pay off those high interest rate credit cards. Make those home improvement projects a reality or just stick some cash in the bank. Apply today at thehomeloanexpert.com. Thanks, Big Joe. Hun, have you seen this internet bill? Why'd the price go up? I don't know. Did you change anything? No. Did you? You switched us to those fancy coffee beans. Maybe you're on a roll, making everything more expensive. Did you suddenly inherit money you didn't tell me about? Whoa. If your internet bill is giving you trust issues, you're not a bad partner. You just need a straightforward price. Maybe we switch to decaf. Get AT&T Fiber. Equipment fees are included, and with no price increase at 12 months, there are no surprises. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash faster. 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. WIBC HD2 W298BB. WIBC HD3 W228CX. Indianapolis. The Pacers are in Detroit to take on the Pistons tomorrow evening at 6.30 on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. It's Kevin and Query. What the hell are you doing, John? Come back and get it. 
Charlie, come back toward the ball. If he's coming, I'm going to engage him, and then I'm going to slip out into the screen. Concentrate, get better. Say to yourself, I got to get better. On 93.5. Oh, baby. And 107.5, The Fan. Nine o'clock hour, Kevin Query. It's Kevin Bowen and Jake Query. Again, the debut of Hard Knocks for the Colts tomorrow night at 10. That follows, honestly, a busy night. You got Butler, Michigan State at 7 tomorrow night. You got Pacers at Pistons at 7. IU, St. John's, I believe, is a 9 o'clock tip. So Wednesday's typically this time of year. When are we on busy Hard nights? Knocks? That's what I'm most worried about. <laughs> Do we know? We do not know. Which I one thought, did he? I, thought I believe the guy, they said the second episode is what they were kind of shooting so for. So the upcoming is the first one, right? Tomorrow night's the debut, correct? So then we're in, and then episode two, it's mostly us, right? Well, I think we might be just, if the season really goes off the rails, that's when we come in. You think so? If things go well, we'll be on the cutting room floor. They're like, yeah, forget that. Yeah. You think so? I, we brought some gold yesterday, I think. Yeah. I, 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 had, like, I, I put on makeup and stuff. I, well, yeah. As soon as you brought that out, I was like, man, the big wigs are here. Speaking of big wigs, you know, I'm always curious about it, and I don't know how much makeup Jeremiah Johnson hey, wears. You, you realize, Kevin, every time that you are swearing me or or damning that, that you have to now work with me, the, the guy that we have on next is the person that you need to th- hold that against, right? Because he's the guy that locked me this position. Jeremiah, oh yeah, he filled in when I was out, right? Yeah. They, Jeremiah. They, Jeremiah was the last, when you were gone and I filled in for you, they they asked me who I wanted to come in, and I gave like a long list of, of names, and they said no 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 we're, we we want heavy hitters we want big time and I said well I, and then I said well uh, Jeremiah Johnson is a guy that I could bring in and they said the the brewer from Montana and I said no but he makes great beer the guy from the Pacers and they said, well you can't get him there's no way you can. and when I did then they said my God you've got Eddie White level connections and I said oh yeah and, <laughs> and Jeremiah came in and then they offered me the job Jeremiah now- that's how it went down right. I hope that story is told on Hard Knocks because uh, <laughs> that's, that's what people need to know, right? That's right. Yeah, JJ, I was thinking this last night. Obviously, a lot gets made over the wardrobe of Clyde Frazier anytime uh, the Pacers are playing the Knicks. But how about the wardrobe of Jeremiah Johnson? I've always wondered this. You pull out some suits that I just sit there and think to myself, not a chance in hell could I ever wear that or pull that off. And I've always wondered... Does Bally Sports have a clothing connection for Jeremiah Johnson, or where do you have this wardrobe that is Michael Grady like? I know this. <laughs> well, my wife uh, used to work at Nordstrom Bingo. until about two years ago, so uh, I had a, ah. a company discount that helped. And um, you know, each year you add one or two, and by you know fifteen twenty years of doing this, you all of a sudden have, got, have a pretty big closet. So luckily, most of those still fit. Uh, I like to think I'm. Maybe, you know, Craig Sager had his own unique style, and I don't want, you know, I'm not, I'm not that, I'm not, I'm not at that end of the spectrum, but I like to have a little fun. And you, you think of, uh, you know, Chris and Quinn, they're the announcers. They're giving you all of the facts, the meat and, the, and potatoes. Sometimes I've got to add a little flavor to the broadcast, and so that's what I try to do. And the one thing I do have the benefit of with my wife is sometimes putting the shirt with the pocket square with the tie my eye doesn't always see the pro the appropriate matches, and even sometimes I'll still mess up. Uh, I asked her yesterday whether I could wear this shirt with this tie, and she said, "Yeah, but that one you wore last week, uh, no, not not good." And I, went, oh, well, thanks. You know, some, she wasn't there when I actually put it all together, so um, I've got to give her a lot of credit for that, and I'm glad you noticed. And I do think it's it's around Christmas time, so I might be due for a new one. So I do think uh, might might be needing to get something out of. Uh, you know, find a find a new addition because some of the ones that I do bring out, they're once or twice a season, but I think people have seen them. So I got to get some new material, I think. You know what's helpful is those granimals where you can match the tags so you know what matches what. That that's Or what I did when I worked in TV, I actually went, I think it was to Nordstrom, Jeremiah. I went to Nordstrom with like eight jackets and a bunch of ties. And a guy actually wrote down for me what tie went with what jacket, and I put it inside the little pocket. So I like I wrote it down yeah. and put it in there, so then I knew. So I never had your wife criticizing that my outfit did not look good on a particular day. But you got to do what you yeah. got to do, right? 
Um, what I like to do is mix and match. And when I would be on the road, that was one thing you could do is you could, you know, five or six game road trip. You've got to kind of change up your shirts and ties a little bit. So each outfit looks different. Hey, last night. I we're getting that, sidetracked. Well, I was well, going to say, JJ's probably thrilled we're not talking about the fourth quarter. That's right. Well, the fourth quarter, the exactly. Pacers, I thought, tried to mix and match what they wanted to do, but they went a little too much. I thought Karis LeVert last night, JJ, um, went a little bit like was expending, extending too much energy, was playing almost too excitable at times trying to be the guy. And I know that Karis LeVert in time probably is the guy in those moments. But is this a team that is still trying to figure out who their exact go-to player is in late-game moments? I think so. That was just the third time all season that we had seen Karis LeVert and Malcolm Brogdon together. And so for so much of Really, the last couple of seasons, Malcolm Brogdon has the ball in his hands late in the game, and we've seen T.J. McConnell be able to generate offense. But Karis LeVert brings a little bit of a different dynamic, and I think he views himself as someone that late in the game can be the primary ball handler. But the offense is a little bit different when he's doing that. And I was thinking about that this morning in that in the first half, I was watching him get into the paint and make some really impressive passes and, and do some things that made me think, He's that playmaker that you like because he can score, but he sees the open man. Sometimes it's human nature, late in the game, in a close situation, the guy that you think of as your go-to guy sometimes maybe tries to do a little bit too much. So maybe that was a little bit of the case. I think the Knicks really just you know, ratcheted up the pressure to the point where the Pacers couldn't get into early offense, and so much of the time they were shooting with – five or less on the on the shot clock or they were trying to you know start offense with 10 or 12 on the shot clock and that becomes clear out and and Karis LeVert was trying to you know like you said probably do a little bit too much so I think of that fourth quarter as being something that is an early season growing pains and, and they will figure it out a little bit and if they can have some more time together while being healthy uh, that that can work itself out. I mean, I know we're supposed to hate the Knicks, but I was damn impressed by their defense in that final quarter. J.J., honestly, I think it's kind of Pacers-like in, in, in the style that they play, or at least what, what you would hope um, down the road there. Jeremiah Johnson, Bally Sports, joins us here uh, on the Payless Liquors Hotline. Kind of expanding on Jake's question to you, um, I think Karis LeVert is an option late. Of course, last night didn't work out well, but you want him to grow into that role. I think kind of a two-man game with Malcolm Brogdon and, and Domas is typically – a nice option late, you know, particularly when you get you know into those closing minutes, try and draw a foul, trying to isolate maybe a matchup. What else do you think this team can turn to late in games? Do you think there's another consistent option that you would feel good about, um, assuming those other two are areas that you can go to? The one thing that I've been fascinated by is injuries have played a factor, but we've seen a different closing five almost every one of these close games. And so Rick Carlisle is not set in his rotations. He is not saying with eight minutes left, these are my five starters. They automatically go back out onto the court. Now, last night it was the starting five that did finish the game. I think that it depends on who you're playing. But if you're playing a team um, that maybe is not elite defensively, then you've got T.J. McConnell as someone that can be on the court, can push the tempo. Because I do think what happens sometimes is when the game slows down a little bit and, and you're just running half-court offense, you don't get as good a look, and as I mentioned, you don't get into the offense as quick. But last night, T.J. McConnell was not having a good game, and so it made complete sense to put that starting five. The other thing is the last couple of games, Keelan Martin has hit some big shots early in the fourth quarter. I don't know if he'll be that guy that'll be in the game late, but if he can hit some of those shots early in the fourth, maybe you're not in that position where you are down three or five late. I don't have any problem with the guys on the court, and really – um, you want to be able to trust Karis LeVert. I like the two-man game probably with Brogdon and Sabonis um, from what you mentioned as, as much as anything. And I want Miles Turner on the court for his defense, but I want him to be a little more impactful offensively. Maybe it's just crashing and getting an extra offensive rebound or two. If he hits that three-pointer, I think it was from the corner uh, midway through the fourth quarter, maybe things change. But he just wasn't as involved offensively in that game last night. So I think each game brings up a different situation. To your point about the Knicks defense, uh, as much as I was annoyed watching Tom Thibodeau argue with the refs every single time they went up and down the court, I do think his move of putting Kemba Walker and Evan Fournier on the bench was probably the move of the game because when Malcolm, was Brogdon incredible. Was guarded, yeah, when, when Malcolm Brogdon was guarded by either one of those two guys, he saw a green light to the basket. And even though Walker started the game well offensively, neither one of those guys could handle the Pacers' guards. But then you put in quickly, you know, Rose, uh, those two guys, Burks, 
they played a different level of defense and they made things difficult for the Pacers. And so that's the biggest issue. A long athletic physical team on the defensive end, think about the Raptors. Um, that's what's causing the Pacers problems and that's where they'll need to improve their half court offense. I know things can change obviously a lot, but right now, JJ, would you say Keelan Martin's ahead of Jeremy Lamb in terms of minutes? I think so. Uh, Rick Carlisle trusts veterans. So for that reason, Jeremy Lamb, I don't know that he will completely fall out of the rotation. He maybe doesn't play last night if Chris Duarte uh, was not injured. But I think that small sample size over the last week, Keelan Martin looks like an NBA player. He has all the confidence in the world. Now, I think last night maybe there were a couple of possessions where he probably needed to stay within himself just a little bit. You like the confidence, but uh, you you don't want it to be, you know, you don't want him to, to go too far. But it does seem like, Maybe defensively, as much as anything, you get a better effort or you get a better physicality from Keelan Martin than Jeremy Lamb. So um, if I had a pecking order right now, Martin would be ahead of Lamb, but things can change. And as we know with the Pacers, injuries can happen. How has Lamb handled it? I don't know, to be honest, just because they've had had one practice at, at home in the last two weeks and obviously not traveling. Uh, I don't think it's probably something that he liked. I, I was trying to watch him a little bit on uh, Saturday night, and it looked like he was clapping, but then maybe you know having some conversations in the huddles with, with some people. I, I would be naive to say that I know exactly. You had, a, you had the same viewpoint that I did actually on Saturday, Jake. So um, that's as close as I know, and I have not specifically asked anyone. But it will be something to monitor moving forward. And, you know, things can happen. Changes can be made in the middle of the season. It will be interesting to see if, if he gets back into the rotation or if he is someone with this three-point shooting that another team might value. I feel like, Jeremiah, the Pacers have good low-post play. I mean, both offensively and defensively complementing one another, perhaps, in Sabonis and Turner. They have good backcourt play between you know Brogdon and obviously Levert and Duarte. But where they lack is a truly attacking from the wing type player is that me being hypercritical or is that a clear void within this team i don't think it's being critical at all it's the last couple of years it's the one thing i was thinking that you know when you look at some of the hypothetical trades and and rumors it was maybe the position that if you could add to the roster it's where you wanted to add but i do think that when they got tj warren he was able to fill some of that role and that's where you miss a little bit in a game like last night it's easy to forget about what T.J. Warren is capable of doing because it's coming up on you know 12 months almost that he's been out of action. But he can make some of those plays on the wing. That's where I think when to your question about Martin and Lamb, Martin is someone who fills that role a little bit more than Lamb. But but he is not at that level as, as you would maybe need in in a close game down the stretch. So I do think it's an area of weakness. They've got the bigs. They've got the backcourt players. You know a Paul George type player, right? Paul George isn't coming back. You don't have a guy like that that's just, you know, ready to to join the Pacers. But that kind of position, it does seem like some of the elite teams have. And and right now, at least with what they put on the court, the Pacers do not. Valley Sports, Jeremiah Johnson joined us here. Uh, JJ, I thought you mentioned earlier, maybe it was on Twitter, um, Isaiah Jackson could be playing soon, not with the Pacers, but maybe the Mad Ants? Yeah, this is really good news because when he went out in that game in Toronto, I think everyone feared the worst. And even after the game, I think it was Rick Carlisle said that he'll be out a while. And he was assigned to the Mad Ants. And so I did ask Carlisle after my interview last night if that was just a a transaction to allow him some time to work in Indianapolis and not be on the road trip. And he said that he has had two good practices. And if all goes well, he could play on Wednesday. So that's a great sign. He's not in any kind of – you know, no crutches, nothing after what happened to the knee. And so it does appear as though that was a scare, but that's all it was. And that, you know, there's a chance, and I'm not going to say with 100% certainty right now, but at least it's trending in the direction to where he could play for the Mad Ants at Gainbridge Fieldhouse at noon on Wednesday. So if you needed any extra incentive to maybe uh, take a business day special there and get out know. to Gainbridge Fieldhouse, the opportunity to see Isaiah Jackson, someone that this franchise is thrilled to have, uh, someone that is a big part of the future. I don't know that this season on you know the Pacers, he's going to be a big contributor, especially with how their front court is. But the best news is that he's healthy, and if he can get some reps with the Mad Ants, all the better. 
Pacers next at Gamebridge Fieldhouse on Saturday. A week, uh, or I, I take that back, this Saturday, taking on New Orleans. Before then, Wednesday and Friday on the road at Detroit and at Charlotte, respectively. Jeremiah Johnson will be on the broadcast. JJ, appreciate it. Jay, Kevin, great first couple of weeks, and I look forward to continuing to listen. You, you haven't listened, have you? you? You don't get up till 10 normally, right? <laughs> oh, come on. Come on yeah. now. I got it. I got, got kids, kids to drop on the off. bus at like eight o'clock, Jake. It's uh, someone's got to so iron those suits early in the morning. Fair, fair enough. Exactly. All right, we appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Jeremiah. JJ. Okay. Uh, time now for a Big O Tire Sports Center update. The Sports Center update on 93.5 and 107.5. The fan is presented by Big O Tires, the team you trust. By the way, I know the Pacers are playing the Pistons tomorrow, Jake, and you know that probably record-wise it doesn't really matter. But I really didn't watch much of Cade Cunningham in college, so I am eager to watch him tomorrow night. He had 25 last night. Uh, Cade, Real, really good player. Cade Cunningham, obviously number one overall pick out of Oklahoma State. That uh, Pistons team, again, not a whole lot uh, to show for. Three and ten on the, the season. All right, Colts, off day today before they get back to practice. Tomorrow, they take on the Bills Sunday, looking for their first win of the year against a team that has a better than 500 record. You look at the Bills right now, extremely balanced, both sides of the ball. Uh, Now, their schedule strength has not been great, but Jake, of all the teams in the NFL right now, they are the only one that has a point differential of more than a hundred. They have outscored their opponents by one forty-five. I, I think we make so much about Josh Allen, rightly so. Their defense gets a little slept on, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I think that's fair. Josh Allen, the most talented quarterback in the NFL. I remember when Josh Allen was at Wyoming, only because I have an odd fascination with the University of Wyoming. I was just in Laramie. I think I shocking. Told you. I know. No, why is that shocking? <laughs> You're wearing a Shelbyville Golden Bears hat right now. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, his story is a great one. Josh Allen's story. And is he the best? I, I think he might have the most natural, like, God-given talent. Yeah, that, that, that's and what I think. Yeah. starting to come into, you know, he, he is he's learning how to play within himself for, for certain and turn into a nice player. You know how difficult it is to draft franchise quarterbacks? Major credit to the Bills. They traded up twice for a guy that was a, what, a 50% passer in college, 55%? You know what's you know? interesting? He was, but, Kevin, if you really looked at it, his passing numbers, and I think this is where people got in trouble, they focused too much on his final year at Wyoming and didn't look at the year prior when he had two senior wide receivers that he threw up really good numbers and really good accuracy. And his numbers dipped, but he was also throwing to inexperienced receivers. And I think that Buffalo obviously did their homework and said, you know what, this guy can play. Quentin Nelson sounds like he's okay exiting the game on Sunday. Obviously, you saw him get banged up. He did finish the game. Same thing with Darius Leonard. Frank Wright didn't have much of an update on Leonard. Uh, This schedule now at Buffalo, home to Tampa, it goes without saying. This is a massive, massive two-game stretch. Speaking of schedule, did you just get a bulletin on your phone uh, for an invite to some pitch-in they're having here next week? Uh, are we I supposed to go to this? Are we? Are we, I'm the new guy. Do, is this typically what? Well, we maybe go it's to? a new guy pitching. New guy, new gal pitching. Oh no, I did indie radio pitch given. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you going to that? I'll go if you go. Well, I, I would say that the odds are probably slim. It's it's well after our show's over. We're not expected to be here that late, are we? Well, we. Well, what day is it? We typically have an 11 a.m. meeting. It's on, on Monday. Oh yeah, you'll be you'll be in REM sleep by then, won't you? <laughs> Pretty much. What am I going to bring? A bag of Fritos? Can't even find those anymore. All right, Jake brought the Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah, you know what Dr. Mottman tells me? Got to start limiting that. I'm on the I'm on the antioxidant infusion caffeinated Zombia Bing cherry water. Frank Reich, save us. Give us your thoughts on these next two games here at end November. Right now, what our mindset is, is this next week, every week is a great measuring stick. And obviously going to Buffalo against a, a very good team, very well coached team, be a great measuring stick to see where we're at at this point in the season. Terrific measuring stick and obviously much needed to get further up those standings in the AFC right now. The hardest remaining schedule in the AFC to close out the year, the Indianapolis Colts. Now, we talked about the Pacers earlier. Again, it's at Pistons, at Hornets Wednesday and Friday, home to the Pelicans, and that begins 10 of 12 at home for the Pacers. They are 6-9 and nine on the year. A little bit of a look ahead to Thursday night football. Patriots at Falcons. Uh, you know these are games late November into December. You got to start rooting for certainly the NFC teams. Uh, I don't think it takes much for Colts fans to root against the Patriots. And 
Thursday night will be one of those occasions with New England very much in the wild card. I hate saying this, Kevin. The Patriots are a team that just, it feels like kind of slowly and off the radar are coming together a little bit here. Yeah, they're one of the hotter teams right now in the NFL, and uh, that's why I think Sunday's big for Buffalo. I know they haven't played New England yet. They still face them twice in December, uh, but it's big to kind of maintain their slim lead right now in the AFC East. College basketball tonight. Matt Painter and the Boilers get back on the floor. They're 2-0 in the year. They will take on Wright State uh, before a big weekend coming up here with North Carolina and then Villanova and Tennessee, a four-team little tournament there. Purdue will play two games. I believe that's in Connecticut. Uh, IU's got St. John's 9 o'clock on Wednesday. Shout-out to the women. They're ranked number four now after beating that? number 13-ranked Kentucky over the weekend. Good to see that the, the – uh, uh, the Kentucky women's program, not afraid to come to Assembly Hall there. St. John's was picked to finish fourth in the Big East. It's a pretty weak non-conference schedule for Mike Woodson's bunch. This should be one of the few tests. Yeah, I would agree that their non-conference schedule is not great. And I don't know that, you know, St. John's still, I'm old enough that St. John's still resonates with me, right? When I hear St. John's, I'm like, oh, wow, Louis Carnesecca, Madison Square Garden, Walter Berry. It's not that same St. John's, but still. Is Mike Anderson their coach, Scotty? So should get up and down the floor up and down the floor. Yeah. I do think some guards that can get in the lane seems to be one of their strengths. And I mean fourth in the big east, Jake. I mean that's that's notable. I mean that that's an NCAA tournament team. No, I would agree with Definitely. that. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, it, but, I mean it, it ain't L I U Brooklyn. You know what I mean? No, it's not. It's not. Directional schools uh, still to be had on that schedule. Butler's going to host Michigan State at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. I believe Aaron Thompson should be back for that one. Butler um, 3-0 on the year. They won back-to-back games this weekend. College football. Uh, we'll see the college football rankings announced. Week 3 of those rankings announced tonight. As Jake was saying earlier, I don't expect a whole lot of moving and shaking, especially in that top 5. Oklahoma should drop a little bit. But now we're about to get some separation here. You've got Ohio State, Michigan State, this weekend, that's obviously going to eliminate um, one of those teams. Oregon uh, is at Utah, so you know not many challenges in the Pac-12, but it looks like that will be um, the one for Oregon. Jake, if you had to go with four playoff teams two weeks ago in the regular season, I assume Georgia and and Ohio State are definites in your mind. Who would be your other two? So you talking about the four teams? that I think are most likely to end up in there, right? Correct. Georgia. Ohio State, Oregon, and Cincinnati. Because I yeah. think George is going to beat Alabama, and I kind of agree with you. If that's a seven-point or more game, Alabama with two losses would be out. And I also think we need to separate Alabama's name. If you look at their resume, it's not this like top 10 filled win resume. I, I know. I, there's no doubt that they're resting on laurels a little bit there, right? It's like, don't we have a committee for a reason? <laughs> like they, they, but, they're, they're supposed to take out the whole brand and past history and all of that. I think Georgia and Ohio State are clearly on a different level from everyone else. One defensively, one offensively. I think under that scenario that you just mentioned, if Oregon and Cincinnati went out, they would round out Correct. the four teams there. Ohio State obviously taking out those other Big Ten teams. Uh, IU-Minnesota Saturday. Minnesota favored by five. IU still looking for their first That's in Bloomington or Minneapolis? Win. That is in Bloomington, I believe. How are you a five-point dog at home against Minnesota. I mean, P.J. Fleck rows a boat. Do you know how long it's going to take them to row a boat down 37? I mean, it, it, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. How it's good. not even open. You guys said Lake Monroe is the next exit. Well, they got to go around Mooresville and pick up some Levi's right, at the I was outlet. Say, yeah, 67 and stop at the cafe there. Was That's it, right. Uh, is this still there? Yeah, I think so. What, what's it called? Gray, Gray Bros? Gray Brothers Cafeteria? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Purdue Northwestern Saturday, that's from Wrigley. Purdue favored by nearly two touchdowns. Um, The bucket game, that kickoff time has been announced, 3.30 next Saturday. Uh, That will air on FS1. At this point for Purdue, it's just about, you know, slotting into a bowl game as they try to get to eight wins in the year. By the way, Eric Wunnenberg says he put a Diet Mountain Dew in the fridge and a a, uh, Sunkist for you as the pitch in for Monday. (laughs) Just for the two of us. Perfect. Gosh, I feel like I'm 12 again. Uh, Notre Dame, Georgia Tech, Notre Dame favored by 18 uh, in, in that one. Then they are at Stanford to close out the year. So it looks like an 11-1 season 
for the Irish. We've got the IHSA State Football Finals next weekend at Lucas Oil Stadium. The odd classes will be on Friday, noon, 3.30, and 7, kind of around there. And then the even classes on Saturday, 2A, 4A, and 6A. In 6A, the matchup, Center Grove and Ben Davis in the Southern Semi-State, Westfield and Merrillville up north. Other local teams still in action, Cathedral and Zionsville in 5A. Mount Vernon 4A, Burbuff and Tri West in 3A, Cecina in 2A, Lutheran and Tri. I had to look up where Tri was, Jake. Uh, just a little bit south of Newcastle. That's the Tri area. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying yeah. that. Yeah. Just so you know, that's what Thank they say you. there. Yeah. yeah. Any Tri hats in your closet? No. I, is, isn't there a Tri County? There is. My mother taught at Tri. So County Tri is different than Tri County? I do think so i don't know that for certain though try pretty much explains isn't there a try central too try west yeah they they are still alive try is the single word that best describes my academic high school career at north central right oh try yeah pretty isn't much. there a trine as well a college that's uh that's in angola is it not used to be tri-state right tri-state there you go it's Gosh. in the tri-state area when you when I say tri state area, what three states do you think of? Most people I think around here would think of like Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, and down near Cincinnati. Yeah, that would have been my guess. Is there but another? You go up there. Well, you go up there and where tri state university trine is. Michigan, it's Ohio, Ohio, Michigan, Indiana. Interesting. Uh, these are just the kinds of questions that Scott Johnston comes up with for the pop quiz. He's walked into the studio, and that means the pop quiz is next. Two three nine ten seventy. It is Kevin Aquari. This year, our average client saved over $350 a month with an easy rate reduction refinance. TheHomeLoanExpert.com. NMLS number 1326241. Presented for the people by Caesars Sportsbook. The goblet has dropped. Download it. You must be 21 and up. If it's after lunch, I probably wouldn't have fed him to the tiger. I get a little ornery when I'm hungry, and timing is everything, people. That's why my Sportsbook app has live in-game betting for football. I don't care if the game has already started. If the time to make your move is in the second half, go for it. Caesar's got you. Caesar likes to move freely. That's why I'm partial to the total. Must be 21. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. At Huntington, we've been asking ourselves, is it possible to lend money at zero interest? And it totally is. Introducing Standby Cash. When you need extra cash, you can qualify for between $100 and $1,000 at Huntington. And it's free when you auto pay us back across three months. Why would a bank do that? Just to look out for people. That's how we reinvent banking. Huntington, welcome. Without automatic payments, 12% APR. Eligibility requirements apply. Amount available is based on customer eligibility. Learn more at Huntington.com slash Standby Cash. Your health is everything. So shouldn't you choose the number one Medicare Advantage plan in Indiana? Whether you're enrolling in Medicare for the first time or looking to change your coverage during the annual enrollment period, United Healthcare offers plans with more benefits and services than original Medicare without costing much more. Great benefits like $0 copay on covered prescriptions, $0 copays on primary care and virtual visits, dental, vision, and hearing coverage. Medicare Advantage plans from United Healthcare can give you more care for your Medicare dollar when, where, and how you need it. With the nation's largest network of Medicare Advantage providers with even more doctors and specialists. To help find the right plan for you, call United Healthcare today at 844-278-9873. That's 844-278-9873. Benefits, features, or devices vary by plan and area. Limitations and exclusions apply based on a year-over-year -year comparison of all network providers. Network size varies by plan and by market. And JMV and mark your calendar for three days of savings on all Connecticut water treatment equipment and supplies. Don't miss Connecticut's pre-Black Friday sale, November the 18th through the 20th. You can enjoy once a year savings like six bags of water softer salt for free when you buy a signature series water softener. Buy four bags of salt, get one free. 25% off filters and accessories. Purchase a Premier Series water softener, get a K5 drinking water station free. That and more at Connecticut's pre-Black Friday sale, November the 18th through the 20th. ConnecticutIndy.com today. 
Spectrum Mobile is reinventing wireless again. Get unlimited on two plus lines for $29.99 a month per line. No contracts, no added taxes or fees. Includes nationwide 5G. Save up to 60% with Spectrum Mobile. Get unlimited on two plus lines for $29.99 a month. Call 855-438-2999 or visit a store near you. Offer valid for new customers on two plus unlimited lines. Spectrum internet required. Savings based on two line comparison of unlimited plans among major national carriers as of 9-2021. Prepaid excluded. Restrictions apply. Is what you missed if you haven't been listening to Indy's Home for Sports. This is a monster day for Indianapolis. I thought it was going to be possible. On your radio. And it's an over the shoulder grab into the end zone for a touchdown. On the fan app, you're listening to the best of Kevin and Query on your smart speaker. You're listening to 93.5 and 107.5. The fan. On your phone. I mean, what? That is a lot of cash. I guess you're all out of excuses. Listen anytime you want. Just listen to that. To the fan. Have you studied? Can you handle the pressure? Sharpen your pencils. It's time for the Pop Quiz with Kevin and Query. Brought to you by Jiffy Lube, Indiana's favorite oil change since 1985. We've got a big announcement coming up in about 10 minutes regarding the Indy 11, so you want to stay tuned for that. And right now, it is Pop Quiz time here on Kevin and Query with Kevin Bowen and Jake Query. Uh, Jake, you got a number for us, one through eight? I just heard them say that there's a best of Kevin and Quarry. That's actually just a better of, isn't it? We don't have a best of material at this point, do we? Uh, Well, we have guests. I just think we just throw all the guests on there. I, I think <laughs> okay. those, that's who saves the day. Like, Dio Dengbo saved the day today. You know, without him. No, no doubt. Well, you could Jeremiah Johnson, Nate Atkins, so... Yeah, but I don't think it's any of just our content on there. More of the guests and less of the two of us, right? Correct, yes. Sometimes uh, I just add out your guys' questions and just the guests <laughs> responding to himself. There you go, yeah. Uh, how many, what's the number that I have to pick from here? One through eight. One through eight. I don't think I've gone with numero uno yet, so I'll go with number one. Bob. 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 You got it. What's up, Bob? Not much. Hey, Kevin. Yo. Uh, you might want to check... Uh, uh, Try is it Strawn, Indiana? Strawn, Indiana, like Mike Strawn, the whiteout. Yeah, it's out towards Newcastle area. Yeah, 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 yeah. The the uh, the high school is still alive. Yeah, j- just south of Newcastle. Yeah, and also you might want to check uh, with the ISSA, but I think they've changed the the time on the state football playoffs. Uh, it's it's going to be by locale now, as opposed to two four six. I thought they announced yesterday, wasn't it? Didn't they announce, Scotty, yesterday that the odd games are going to be Friday and the even games? Scotty hasn't. I, I thought I saw that. I will I will double-check uh, that, Bob. But, yeah, Tri is in, may, try, try yeah, in Henry Bob. County. Yes, yes. Bob, did you go to Tri High? No, 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 no. I went to Indianapolis Manual High School. Okay. Here, Chris Chris emailed in, Jake, and said Tri is close to Louisville, home of the great Marion, Marion Pierce. Pierce, who is what, now third on the all-time scoring list? Uh, well, he was obviously first before Damon Bailey surpassed him, and then Romeo Langford, I think, got past him, right? Correct, and I don't know if the kid, um, Luke Brown, got that high up last year, but um, yeah. All right, Bob, well, thank you for that insight, and uh, Jake, you want to throw number one at him? Bob, here is question number one for you. You ready? I'm ready. Are you sitting down, Bob? I'm sitting down in my car. Well, if you were standing, I would, was going to say, you might want to make sure you're on your toes. Uh, which team currently owns the best record in the NBA? A, the Wizards. B, the Nets. C, the Phoenix Suns. Or D, the Golden State Warriors. I believe it's the Phoenix Suns. Okay. All right, number two, the 49ers opened last night's Monday night blowout of the Rams with touchdown drives of 93 and 91 yards in their first two offensive possessions. Who was the last team to open an NFL game with a pair of 90-yard TD drives? A, the Rams, B, the Bucks, C, the Colts, D, the Packers. Packers. Okay. Packers suck! Mm-hmm. Yep. Up next for you, Bob, can you name the first player in NBA history who later went on to become an executive for the L.A. Clippers, uh, to score 70 or more points in a game? Oh. I believe uh, he played collegiately at Seattle. I believe. Yeah. We Thank mentioned you. his last name's a college, yeah, prominent his, basketball His college. last name is the current national champion in college basketball. 
Show's uh, over at 10. I, I can picture him, but I can't think of his name. Bobby, uh, his name, ri- college his name in Waco, rhymes with, Texas. His name rhymes with Melgen Whaler. Elgin Baylor. Okay. All right. Well, there you right go, Bob. Baylor. On this day in 1957, Bill Russell of the Celtics set an NBA record with 49 rebounds. Russell would break his own record in February of 1960 with Wilt Chamberlain breaking Russell's record in November of 1960. Within two rebounds, what is Chamberlain's NBA record for rebounds in a game? 48. Say it again. 28. Double it and subtract one. It's got to be more than 49. 50. Oh, more than well, you're telling me that part. Uh, 54. Okay. There we go. Let's okay. go. Uh, who holds the Tampa Bay Buccaneer record for most passing yards in a game and later went on to win a Super Bowl with the Redskins? Doug Williams, Tom Brady, Jameis Winston, or Vinny Testaverde? Doug Williams. Okay. There we go, Bob. All right, just to confirm, Scotty did uh, the IHSA State Finals. It will be odds on Friday, evens on Saturday. So for those of you looking ahead to next weekend, there you go with that. All right, uh, best record in the NBA, Jake. He said the Suns. The Suns are sitting at 10-3, and three, which puts them one game behind the Warriors of Golden State at 11-2 and two with the NBA's best record. You blew it! <laughs> You don't even get a lousy copy of our home game. You're a complete loser. You lose. Good day, sir. Tony, get your bag and get the hell out of here. Never say never, but never. (laughs) Now, before seeing, thank you, Mike Tomlin, on the USC job. Uh, Now, before that question, Jake, would you have got, I, I would not, the leading team in the East right now? The leading team in the East? Yes. I, seeing those answers, I would not have no, known that. The Washington Wizards. Yeah. N- Can no you believe way. that? The Wizards. 10 and 3 after that big trade. You never hear about the Wizards in the do you? Offseason. Like they're kind of, for a big market team, they're kind of obscure, which is weird because yeah. they have good players. Uh, the 49ers opened last night's Monday night blowout of the Rams with touchdowns, uh, touchdown drives of 93 and 91 yards. The last team to open an NFL game with a pair of 90 plus yard TD drives. Right here in your own backyard, the Indianapolis Colts did it in, at Tennessee in 2018. Remember that game? Win and get in. That was Sunday night football. That's right. Andrew Luck to Dontrell Inman to start that game. Dontrell big Inman was a, a, a good late season side for them. Very good. Yeah, that was a big win in Nashville. I think that's part of the reason why this market has such a, oh, the Titans aren't very good. <laughs> but yet, here they are at 8-2. Uh, the first player in NBA history to score 70 or more points in a game. In fact, Elgin Baylor, 71 against the Knicks on November 15th of 1960. 55 rebounds for Wilt Chamberlain. That is the NBA record. And then with the big hint from Jake, Doug Williams, 486 yards. That not Tom not, Brady, not James not Winston, messing around. not Vinny Testaverde. Back then, that's a huge number. I mean, nowadays it's a big number. How about this, by the way? He did it at Minnesota on November 16th of 1980. Minnesota, I don't believe that early, but Minnesota, this is a great, I'm going to ask Scotty Johnson this question. Scotty is in here right now. He is the aficionado of all, of everything, basically. Scotty, if I'm not mistaken, and I have done this before where I've run the risk of asking you a question, thinking that I know an answer, and then you immediately come up with three other possibilities. Uh, The only player in the Football Hall of Fame that was born in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, Scotty's thinking. He's processing. Scotty said a Vikings defensive lineman. He is correct. And his initials are the same as the Indiana Pacers television play-by-play voice. Chris Dolman. Chris Dolman is indeed the correct answer from Scott Johnston. What high school for Dolman? He did not. He, I think he moved from here when he was like three years old. But he was gotcha. born in Indianapolis, and he is the only. You could that another great trivia question that you could ask people, Kevin. In the football hall of fame under the bust, it just lists the teams of service. So people will say like, "Is Peyton Manning going to go in as a Colt or a Bronco?" Well, it just lists Indianapolis Colts, Denver Broncos. The Indianapolis Colts players that are listed in the Hall of Fame. I mean, obviously you have Marshall Falk, Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison, Edron James. Um, one that I think people would, it might be the only other one, Richard Dent. 
Hmm. How many people remember that Richard Dent was a Colt? Yeah, that's... That is like, I mean, it was so late in his career, at that point he was just a dimple. You know, the... <laughs> Uh, that was good. Um, the next Indianapolis, unless there's someone that I'm forgetting about, the next Indianapolis Hall of Famer, and he's still got a ways to go in his NFL career, but so far so good, probably Zach Martin. Yeah. Played in the league for six, seven years. I think he's made all pro and virtually Chittard all of those season. Chittard. Um But yeah, Indianapolis native, played in Notre Dame, I would assume. How about the kid How about the kid with the Washington football team? Terry McLaurin? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's he's got a ways to but go, I think. But that's a difficult yeah. position to get in. Yeah, right? I mean, great start to his career, but Martin with the All-Pros, I think, would be the one. Yeah, he's a really good player. Be the one. Yeah. Really yeah. good player. Um, we have an announcement to get to next, is that right? Yes. Okay, we will do that. Uh, you are listening to Kevin and Query Soccer News next here on 93.5, 107.5 The Fan. We've done it again. While other lenders are talking about raising their rates, our expert team at Golden Oak Lending has dropped rates even lower. I'm James Hawkins, president of Golden Oak. With the low, low rate of 1.875% and home values at all-time highs, you can get more cash out of your home or eliminate pricey mortgage insurance. Call 317-706-GOLD today to get your refinance started within minutes and make no mortgage payments until next year. After all, our team speaks mortgage and loves translating it for customers. We can save you even more money with our 1.875% rate. Plus, you'll never pay up front for your appraisal at Golden Oak. Call 317-706-GOLD today. Golden Oak. NMLS 114937, 1.875% fixed, 2.952% APR, FHA 15-year mortgage with 20% equity and approved credit. Hey, it's JMV here. Did you know the lack of sleep from snoring can lead to other health issues for both the snore and the snorer's partner? My friends at Aurora Specialty Sleep Clinic can help you. You can eliminate the need for cumbersome, uncomfortable, and noisy, expensive CPAP machines in some cases. And it does work. Find out how. It may be covered by insurance and Medicare. Get a deeper, more restful, and rejuvenating sleep today. A better night's sleep is just an appointment away. StopYourSnoreNow.com or 317-482-7900. Bet Rivers Sportsbook is ready to make this football season one to remember. All season long, you can score at Bet Rivers Sportsbook with free bets, odds boosts, and more. With player props, thousands of game lines, and live in-game betting, Bet Rivers Sportsbook delivers a best-in-class sports betting experience and has an experienced customer service team to back it up. Visit Bet Rivers Sportsbook today and bet this football season with a local trusted team that puts you first. Go to betrivers.com and be a winner. Partner of French Lick Casino Resort. Must be 21 over to play. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-9 with it. 1-800-994-8448. Playable only in Indiana. Hey, this is Jeff Saturday, and you've heard me talk about more restoration for years. And yes, it's true. I've used more restoration on my home three separate times for a fire and flooding. I care about my family, and more made me feel confident in using them. Kenny and the team at Moore have just become a part of First On Site, making them one of the largest restoration companies in Indiana and North America. Same people, same personal customer service, but large enough to handle any loss, any disaster with First On Site. When you need help, call the people Jeff Saturday calls. Call Moore Restoration, a First On Site company. For the first time in the history of Hard Knocks, HBO and NFL Films are teaming up for an in-season edition of the Emmy-winning sports reality franchise. Hard Knocks in season, the Indianapolis Colts, follows the Colts as they navigate the challenges of an NFL season and battle for a spot in the playoffs. This is going to be behind-the-scenes footage of your favorite team like you've never seen before. The weekly docuseries premieres Wednesday at 10 p.m. on HBO Max. Hi, I'm Ryan Kelly with thehomeloanexpert.com. This year, our average client saved over $350 a month with an easy rate reduction refinance. What would you do with an extra $350 a month? Buy a new car? Pay down the credit cards? Or possibly take the family on that much-needed vacation? We are locking loans in the twos. How much could you save? Let's find out today. Visit thehomeloanexpert.com. The Home Loan Expert LLC, NMLS number 1326241. Right now at Wendy's, see why everyone is raving about their brand new fries. Natural cut skin on with a hint of sea salt and guaranteed to be hot and crispy or they'll replace them. You know, the way fries should be. Try Wendy's guaranteed hot and crispy fries today A participating Wendy's. The Colts look to avenge last year's playoff loss in Buffalo when they face the Bills. Coverage Sunday morning at 10 on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. You're listening.
listening to Kevin and Query on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Hey, Jake, someone tweeted at me. Is the Indy 11 announcement to say that they have signed Lionel Messi? Uh, maybe this is the first step in that process. Uh, without a head coach, I don't know who you, you're signing as players. And uh, the 11, they have a new coach. He is Mark Lowry, and he joins us now on the Payless Liquors Hotline. Coach, congrats, and welcome to Indy. Appreciate the welcome, guys. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking here, Mark, at the places you know that have brought you in a circuitous route here to the Indy 11. Places like England, Orlando, Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, El Paso. And the first thing I think to myself is, good Lord, do you own a winter coat? <laughs> uh, I owned a few back in England, then I threw them out, and I've just bought a few recently, so I'll, I'll, I'll be okay. I think. <laughs> so what is it about uh, this franchise, this opportunity, you know, you have... I always get fascinated by when when guys have had numerous stops because you can kind of take a little piece maybe of what you've learned along the way, if that makes sense. What is it about this opportunity that most was intriguing to you? Well, that, that makes total sense. You know, every everywhere you go, you know, it's important to be there long enough to to make an impact and and to learn something and to leave the place in a better situation when you got there and also leave as a better coach or a better person. I think I've done that every one of my stops, and I think. The big thing about this one, this move, was was the challenge. Um, in the 11, I see, and, and a lot of people see them as one of the biggest clubs in the league in terms of tradition, history, fan base, um, ambition, all those things. And they've underachieved the last couple of years. Um, for whatever reason, they haven't made the past two years in a row. And that challenge of kind of waking up a giant, if you guess, is, is really appealing to me. And I, and I like the challenge. So this was one that, that I thought was great for me in the next step of my career, you know, in terms of my growth as a coach. And, and I like a challenge. Challenge gives you energy, and, and, and I'm now energized to go and do that. The fourth head coach in the history of Indy 11, Mark Lowry, joins us most recently with the El Paso locomotive. Um, you, you mentioned that challenge. Would you say it was the history and the appeal of Indy 11 or more of what you see in this roster as, hey, I can go in there and this can be a pretty quick fix? <laughs> well, it was the history and appeal, definitely. And then I think based on the ownership and leadership of the club, that I know uh, for a fact they're very supportive of the coach and, and they provide the players and the coaches um, what they need on a day-to-day basis to the resource that they need to be successful. So I think this club deserves success. I think the leadership, um, ownership, the fan base deserve that. And like I said, I want to be the guy that, that, that can bring that consistently now. Now, Coach, this is just a peak cheesy radio question here, but my wife and I have just gotten done watching Ted Lasso, and I don't know if you have had a chance to watch. Or I guess I should ask I have, that first. Have, have you watched? I love it. Okay. I, have, I love it. You, I love if it. you had to compare your coaching style to a member of Richmond's coaching staff, who would you compare it to? I'm probably a bit of a mixture of Ted and Nate. <laughs> okay, I think that's a good one. Could you could could you share the qualities? Because the, no, there absolutely. are some interesting qualities. So you betray yourself. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> um, you know, I think Ted, the way he builds relationships with players and 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 cares for the players, that's I think that's one of my strengths. Um, that, that 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 bond that you get with your players and and how you empathize with them and can help them through their day to day life as a man, as a husband, as a father, and also as a player on the field. Um, <clears throat> Those things, I think, are really important for the modern-day coach. Um, so I think Ted obviously brings a load of that, you know, in abundance. Um, and then I think Nate was kind of more the tactician behind the scenes. So tactically, I feel like that's one of my strengths as well, in-game adjustments, um, game management, stuff like that. I think Nate brought that. And, and, you know, I just don't have a beard, so I can't be coach beard, you know. <laughs> so I guess those two is it for me. You find yourself spitting in the mirror a lot in the morning time. I mean, you know. <laughs> hey, no, no, that never happened. <laughs> Coach, let me ask you, you know, the, the roster is still in flux as well for the Indy 11. Mark Lowry, their new head coach, is joining us here on the Payless Liquors Hotline. How much input will you have in terms of the roster? And for those like myself who are admittedly kind of a neophyte when it comes to soccer, you know, what style of play – our fans going to see when they come out to see your team? Well, yeah, we'll start with the roster. Obviously, there's going to be a bit of transition. Um, I have my my own thoughts on players, and, and the club is going to give me, you know, authority to make those decisions. I think that's important for for a coach to have that uh, to feel like he can build his own roster. There are there are 
a number still on contract. Um, I won't get into who, but it's exciting to work with those guys as well. But there obviously will be. I think the fans and everybody can expect some change to the roster because, first of all, that's soccer. That, that's, that's soccer at this level. That there's a lot of change. And, and usually that once I get my team in place, you'll see in El Paso, um, I like to keep it together for as long as possible because I think building the understanding over one, two, three years is really important. So once I get the core group together, you know, I don't like to change it much. But obviously right now, this is a club in transition. Uh, transition of coach, transition of direction in terms of we want to start going up instead of down. Um, so there will be changes to that. And then, uh, like I said, bringing those players and they have to match my style. Um, I can only, the truth is any coach is only as good as the players have in the field. And, and, and a big part of that is recruiting the right people. My style is about, frankly, it's about hard work. It's about guys running for each other, chasing for each other, passion and energy. Um, that's at the forefront of everything we do. So guys are willing to do that and invest in each other and sacrifice for each other. They're the type of players I, gonna, I want on this team. Is it, true? Is it true that people from England can sniff out a fake British accent from a mile away? Yeah, I think we can. <laughs> I think we can, yeah. Please, <laughs> please don't try, Jake. No, I just I just think it's like, I'm telling you, like, you I'm assuming that you're a husband and a father because you made reference to that earlier, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I am, yeah. Because if I had that accent, I'd just be running around everywhere. Just, you know what I mean? <laughs> How are you? you know, and I'm, maybe stop, buy a stop. pint. Mark, uh, it's a great passion. I think you're going to love Indianapolis. I think uh, it's a perfect place Aside to, from my uh, accent. to raise a family. As long as you don't run into Jake and you know people trying to imitate British accents right. at, the, at, at the local uh, pubs around town, um, I think you're absolutely going to love it. And again, I think it's an ideal place uh, to raise a family. So welcome and uh, congratulations. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for the chat. I enjoyed it. Mark Lowry, the new head coach of the Indy 11. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for the chat. Enjoyed it. It's pretty close, right? Yeah, I'd I'd give it about a... I I think a reminiscent of your high school (laughs) resume. (laughs) Now, did you take foreign languages in school growing up? Spanish. Is that it? Yes. Never took French? No. Took Spanish, tested out a a handful of credits going to IU and... That was good. It took four years in high school. I had to have man. I struggled with it. at IU. I had to have two foreign languages. Took Spanish, right? Jeez, what was your major? English. <laughs> Makes perfect sense, right? You yeah, have to exactly, eight right? semesters of foreign language. So I took uh, four semesters of Spanish, and then for my second foreign language, I well, I'll take French, right? That was the next, and like on the second day, everyone was speaking nonstop. It was myself and then a bunch of kids who had spent four years of French in high school. So I dropped it, and I went in and to the foreign language department and said, what's the easiest foreign language? And they said, oh, Bambra, easily. And I said, what's that? It's an African clicking language, that kind oh, of thing. That sounds like Nate Atkins phone. Earlier. So, yeah, so I said, well, this is perfect, right? So I took that, and then like two weeks into it, the grad student, something happened, I think, with his uh, legality. And so they said, well, unfortunately, he's no longer on campus so the class went away, and I said, well, what's the second easiest foreign language? And they said Swahili. So I took Swahili for three semesters, and my claim to fame was when the movie The Air Up There with Kevin Bacon came out, and it had Swahili in it. I was, for all my friends, I was the subtitles. So could you do a show in Swahili? Uh, Jabba Monofuzi. I know this much. Kajana Carter, the running back. Kajana means what little, did you just say? little baby. What's that? What did you just say? Hey, Jabba Monofuzi? Yeah. I said, like, hello, how are you, my friend? My name was Bonham Cuba, which means big man. So you could swear, and I couldn't dump it because yeah. I wouldn't know. <laughs> that, That's you right. think FCC would be on well, that? Unfor- to be honest with you, it's been 26 or 27 years, and Hijamba Mwanafuzi is about as much as I remember. By the way, there is a big soccer game tonight, Jake. Uh, the United States at match. Jamaica match, correct? 5 o'clock. Uh, important uh, to continue the momentum from beating Mexico over the weekend as they try to qualify for the World Cup. It's on the pitch. We'll talk about it tomorrow, even if they're level, right? God, that All was right. good. Tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great day, everybody.